All right, bud. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Um, you got, I don't know, I guess it's a fan base. I guess it's like, I don't know what it is, but I got people left, right, and center being like, yo, get Buck on, yo, get Buck on. And I'm like, who's Buck? You yeah. just told our guy, your IG handle. I'm like, I couldn't even find this guy. And I'm like, who is he? He's just this mysterious, stoic, mystical freaking nomad apparently that yeah. no one can really track down but is doing all these things so clear the air for me man what is your what is your life about give me some context oh man um yeah i guess how, how can i best answer that i'm just about man just exploring life um if i'm interested in something just exploring that get involved in a few different things uh i've been involved in the fashion scene i do some stuff in music with manila gray um I'm also involved in the technology scene. So just a bit of different different things here and there, just enjoying life. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, you see how he just dodged that right there? He's kind of like, ah, you know, I like to do a little bit of this. I'm in this industry. I'm in that industry. You know, I move around in certain ways. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, fair. I get you. You have to keep it like the water, man. Just keep it flowing. Keep it <laughs> What's that accent? Can you can you clear that up for me? What You're is right. that? Um, so my accent is Zimbabwean. I grew up, uh, I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Which is very far away from here. Very far away. Yeah, I'm talking like 30 hour flight, like mm. all in. So literally the exact, probably opposite side of the world. Yeah, yeah. the exact opposite side of the world. Uh, grew up there, moved to Vancouver at like 18 for yeah. school. Yeah. When I moved to Vancouver, funny enough, I had never even Googled Vancouver. <laughs> I was just kind of like, I mean, if that's where I'm good, that's where I'm good. Because I, I, I did it based on going to SFU. Mm. So I only applied to one school. Did that, I was like, well, guess I'm gonna go. So how did you stumble upon SFU? Oh, you just hit three random letters on your <laughs> on your keyboard and that's what pops up? Pretty much, man. <laughs> oh man, it's a funny story. So actually, now that I think about it, every time I tell the story, I realize how naive I was at the time. I, was, I probably still am a bit, but you know. Yeah. So what happened is, in my last year of high school, um, I was just involved in a lot of stuff, like playing sports, uh, extracurriculars, uh, duties that I had at school and that sort of thing. And so my parents kept on putting pressure, like, yo, where'd you want to go to school? Where'd you, go, where'd you want to go to school? And I was like, okay, I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out. Uh, everything that I was doing and involved in seemed so immediate at the time. Mm. And then school was just kind of like, I'll get to it. Mm -hmm. When I'm ready, I'll get to that. So all over the world, there are these college fairs where they'll send like representatives from schools all over the world mm. to like try to recruit students to go to different schools, right? So I remember this one day, there was this college fair that was happening um, at a high school in my town. And so I was talking to my pop, he's like, oh, you should go check that out. Maybe you'll see some schools that you like. I'm like, oh, I mean, I guess, okay. Sure, whatever, dad. Like, yeah, sure, whatever, dad. Yeah. Um, and so that day I had practice, so I, I knew I wouldn't be there long. Mm. So I practice? What type of practice? Uh, rugby. Okay. Yeah. I could have guessed. All right, cool. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, so I played rugby most of my life, so... I had rugby practice and I go to I go to this uh, college fair and there's like people from all over the world, like Australia, the States, like other parts of Africa, mm -hmm. the UK, Canada, obviously. And I walk into a room, right? Literally the first person I make eye contact with is the guy from Simon Fraser University. Okay. So I walk in the room, made eye contact. You know, like when you go somewhere and people are trying to like solicit and they bring you in with the eyes. Hey, you. Yeah, 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 so I'm like, oh, okay, you got me. Mm. Boom, so I go talk to this guy, funniest dude ever. <laughs> like, and he's not like intentionally funny, but he's just like super of music. I'm like, oh, okay, I like this guy. And he had like the weirdest accent I've ever heard. And I'm like, yo, that accent's dope. <laughs> and so I talk to this guy, I'm like, yo, I like this guy. Um, I'm like, I like this guy, shout out John. Shout out John, John, <laughs> if you're watching this, shout out you. <laughs> so... I talked to this guy and he's like, yeah, Simon Fraser, oh, it's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. You're amusing. Your accent's dope. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> and so I don't really pay it any vibe, right? So then the next day I'm talking to my pops and he's just like, oh, how is the fair thing? Now it's pressure. And I only remember one school because that's like, that's, that's the only it. person I spoke to. John with the accent. John with the accent. So I'm like, um, Simon Fraser uh, has a good business program. <laughs> And yeah, I think that's where I want to go. At that point, I'm in too deep. <laughs> so literally came to the other side of the world based on this random encounter with this one recruiter randomly at like 18. Wow. And then, and at the time, my mindset was like, it's not really where you go, it's what you do. Yeah. And it's like, you can make something happen anywhere or you can like struggle anywhere. Or, 
So my whole mentality was just like, hey man, I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm not gonna look into it too much. I'm just gonna experience life and, and see how that goes. Which was super naive now that I think about it because it's like, I moved here, I didn't know a single person not in Vancouver, but in Canada. Like I had no family Nothing. here. Like <laughs> that they all just like, Nothing. oh. And what's crazy is uh, we finished our school year in November, December. What? Yeah. So typically people will start school in the fall. Yeah. So you'll finish November, December, then you take a break until like the next fall. Yeah. But I started school like I started university three weeks after finishing high school. Wow. I hadn't even done like I, I didn't even have my final high school grades when I started university. Wow. So it was just kind of like, I was like, oh, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Like, there's nothing to wait for. I'm just going to figure it out. That's crazy. So pretty much as random as just three le- random letters on a on a keyboard, basically. I'm telling you, man, like, I could have ended up anywhere. I was waiting for, like, the, ah, like, I saw this girl. She was cute. She had his right. accent. I thought that's where you were going Bro, with it. it was just John. Oh, that's not even the best part of the story. <laughs> so I get to the airport, right? And so I speak to someone. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy doesn't have the John accent. I'm like, okay, that's weird. John, like... What was the John accent? Okay, so I came to find out later on, this guy wasn't even from here. Like, grew up in, like, England. Then he lived in, like, Australia. So his accent was just, like, a mashup of all these random accents. (laughs) So my first day here is me talking to different people. I don't really care about what they're talking about. Like, I'm, I'm not here for that. I'm trying to hear that accent. <laughs> and so like my first three weeks of like chasing that accent, I'm like, nah. <laughs> like I came here, one of the main reasons of here is this accent and I don't hear it anyway. What's up it. with that? Jesus. So yeah. So you had to call dad and you're like, listen, I made I'm a like, mistake. Bro, I'm coming back. Like, <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to London. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to London, period. Nah, nah, but yeah. So you went SFU out of Zimbabwe, SFU, yeah. like besides just Hey, you know, spin the globe, put a finger down, fuck yeah. it, we'll make it happen wherever we are. Yeah. That was that literally it? That was literally it, man. And I think when I when I reflect on it, it's something I probably should have given more thought, but one thing I've come to realize is a lot of the greatest opportunities or the the greatest moments have come out of just a curiosity mm. and uh, understanding that there's things that are within your control and things that are outside of your control and finding that balance in between, like, okay, how much do I want to leave to chance and how much will I, like, sit down and plan out and figure out mm-hmm. and just in, enjoy the experience of just being here, enjoy the experience of being able to pursue things and mm. and being able to, to kind of just take a chance and see what happens. Yeah, there's certain people on this planet that are, like, shapeshifters and can just like bend the space-time continuum to get whatever the hell they want out of life you know where it's just like yeah i don't really care like you could take this all away today Mm -hmm. and i'm good you know like any of the people in this room right now you could take everything away from them yeah and they'd be good yeah it's just like people that have that mentality of like throw me anywhere any place anytime i'll figure it out yeah and that's like not not only like i'll figure it out like I'll succeed and I'll win yeah. in whatever situation, yeah. which gives such a divine confidence. I was just actually just at a convocation this morning at SFU. Yeah. I did not graduate. Oh, My right. girlfriend Tracy graduated. Shout out Tracy. I dropped out. And okay. Shout out Tracy. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. Um, and, you know, part of what I was realizing sitting there watching these grads go across the stage is like a ton of them were sad because they lost part of their identity. Because like, oh no, I'm an SFU student, this is what I do. And that's what they've been for four, five, six, eight years. Yeah. And that's their identity versus other people like yourself and other guests we've had on this podcast. It's just like, no, 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 no. I don't identify with this job, this school, this girlfriend, this boyfriend. Like I am me first and foremost. Take all that away, I'm good. Yeah. That's such a divine confidence. Where the hell do you get that from? Oh, man, I completely agree with you. And I think that's a great way to think about it. I think for me, it came out of... I think when I was young, I was always super anxious. I was very, very anxious, always thinking, always kind of worried about something. And then one day I stopped being ignorant of my mortality. I stopped living life as if life is always going to be there, as if I'm not going to die. And I think the more I thought about death, the more I got inspired to live. Because like you say, like you can put me anywhere, even if it all goes away today, which it will for everyone. Mm. Like, I think that's that's what we don't really think about or talk about that often. Death is such a taboo thing, and we just kind of assume, oh, it's not going to happen to me, or we have a very abstract idea of, of life. But I think once I became aware of my own mortality, I didn't treat life as, like, there'll always be a tomorrow. So that's why even when things, even if I don't have all the answers, I'd rather just jump in today because I might not have a tomorrow. And I'm fine with that, and I'm, I've come to terms with that. Mm. And so... 
knowing that I can only control how I live and not necessarily how long I live, every single day is completely up to me. It's like I, I create my own reality. Uh, no such, I don't think any situation is good or bad because by the time it happens, it's pretty much neutral. Right, like if someone would come in that door, like punches both in the face, it's not like, oh, is this good or bad? It just hurts. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it, it just hurts, and you kind of deal with it. It's like, oh, you can, you can fight back. You can be like, oh, it's whatever. Yeah. But the occurrence of that event might be unfavorable, but from now going forward, it's already happened, yeah. and therefore it's neutral because because it's already happened. It doesn't necessarily determine what you'll do in the future. It now creates a space for you to pick options and say, well, this is my current, this is my current situation. This is the current environment. These are the current c- conditions. But if your life is future facing, it's kind of like, hey man. I don't know how long I have here, so I'm not gonna worry about this and be resentful for it for 10 years and hold on to yeah. what just happened. Yeah. You just gotta keep it moving, and that's just kind of like how I think about things. All right, so listen, um, guys, get some popcorn, settle in. This is gonna be a long <laughs> ride. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me counter you. Yeah, I understand your point of view, yeah. and I agree with it. But to play devil's advocate here, I would say that in my experience, so what you're saying is that if you have a future facing life, you you understand you don't take anything for granted. You understand, again, you're not ignorant of your own mortality and you understand the power of now and, and, and what we have. Life is just a collection of nows. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. However, I've come to the spot I'm at in life, which I'm happy with, yeah. is by having this similar understanding of time meaning like oh shit this is gonna run out yeah this is gonna end it's yeah. gonna be darkness one day or whatever is beyond this this bag of flesh that i'm in right right okay cool so i understand that and then i had this whole thing of like oh well, i want to be a top 40 under 40 or 30 under 30 or, or 25 under 25 or whatever it is right and i'm like okay so now there's a timeline okay so there's a there's an end there's a timeline now i felt this like existential angst constantly of like okay we need to get to this spot by this time yeah and constantly for like forego foregone forewent i don't know i just didn't think about today meaning like i don't know like today is, today is history like today is gone right now like i'm not thinking about right now i'm thinking about five years from now because that's what i'm trying to get my mind is completely in that five years from now yeah. completely forward facing life So from that, I was able to have this, you know, take fear from in front of you and make it go behind you and let it push you, right? Yeah. So I would say, I wouldn't actually say this, but for the sake of conversation, I I would say that having a future-facing mentality is a detriment to your now. It is a detriment to your now, but I think, um, and I don't necessarily disagree with your point of view, I think it's kind of finding a balance in enjoying the moment that you're in, but also deciding where you're going, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So the balance is like, okay, cool. Like, this is the situation I'm in. It's, okay, actually, let me take it back and maybe this will give you more context in how I think about myself or life. Um, by definition, I think the self from a philosophical uh, perspective, it's two things. It's your facticity and your transcendence. So your facticity being the things that are objectively factual about you. So like, okay, your age, your height, all of these things that are factual. And your transcendence is what you can transcend into be. So who you see yourself as or who you see yourself as being. So even though you're not that person yet, Yourself is made out of those two, who you are now and who you have the potential to be or what you see yourself as being able to do. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of how I reconcile the now and the later. Whereas like I live in the present because that's my facticity, but I do the best to influence my future because that's what my transcendence is. Mm -hmm. And always being aware of those two and trying to minimize the gap between my facticity and my transcendence is basically how I've... I've lived my life and how I think right now, who knows what I'll think in like two, three years, but at least for this very moment, that's just how I think about things. Rewind two, three years. How are you thinking about this concept? Like, how are you thinking about your own mortality? How are you thinking about the future? How are you thinking about planning? How are you thinking about who you are as a person versus who you wanted to be? Like, how how did your paradigm adapt to where it's at now? Um, 
So sorry, you're 20? 20, uh, 24. 24. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I like yeah. to think about that. We're getting yeah. up there in years now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like. like uh-huh, yeah. uh, There's a quick, quick yeah. arithmetic. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, how were you thinking about this at 20, at 21? Yeah. I think, I think no knowledge is new. I think most of the things that we'll ever know, we already kind of do, but we haven't allowed that to really kind of like settle down and really put that into action. Mm-hmm. So I think, look, if you, if you talk to enough people, you watch enough movies, you experience enough life, most of the things that you'll ever learn, you've already kind of seen. But I think taking time to really sit with your own thoughts and taking time to really be by yourself and really figure out who you want to be. Um, I think for me, that's kind of when that paradigm became more defined and I was able to articulate who I am to myself and I didn't have to articulate it in a way that anyone would understand. Because what I find with most people, if you ask them who to describe themselves, they articulate it in a, in a way that everyone else understands. Mm. And then I think like you were saying before, those people, when you cross that stage, your whole identity and your whole articulation, you have to minimize it to something so simple. And then if you ever lose that thing, you're now at this kind of weird place of like, oh, like, who am I? What do like, I do? Like, what do I do? Yeah. And that sort of thing. So I think for me, once I really sat with myself and I really sat with my own thoughts and I ignored um, those fears of like, oh, I don't want to sound stupid or I don't want to sound crazy. It's kind of like, I'm going to sound how I'm going to sound. You know what I mean? I'm going to think what I'm, what I'm going to think and really dive into those thoughts and be critical of your own thoughts and, you know, like mm-hmm. kind of have that intellectual wrestling match with yourself where you say, well, this is how you've lived life. Is that the way you want to continue living it? Mm-hmm. Um, you And also realizing like, okay, whoa, I'm not the hero in the story. You know what I mean? Like really coming to terms That's with tough. who you are. That's tough. And like, yeah, you know, placing yourself beyond yourself and really understanding and objectively looking at like, okay, who am I? What do I want? Uh, how have I lived life? What are the things I've done wrong? What are the things I value? And I think through that process for me is kind of when I started thinking in a specific way that that's kind of like led me to where I am today. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think two people, when, when you have a a divine, ooh, that's the wrong word. I like that. A heightened. Yeah. Now let's go with divine. Yeah. When you have a divine understanding of yourself. Yeah. Like when you've really gone through the weeds and constantly gone through the weeds, because everyone always says like, hey, follow your intuition. Here's the thing. Your intuition might be lying to you. Yeah. Because you need to go into the clockwork of your brain because at the end of the day, we are primal animals yeah. and really understand, oh, I'm thinking this way because I'm motivated from these four things, right. which is tapping into my primal brain and not even letting me hit my prefrontal cortex and yeah. say, oh, I'm not even thinking about this on, on a deeper level. And I'm misinterpreting that as yeah. intuition, which is like, oh, okay, it isn't, it isn't. It's a deeper motivation. Yes. Could that be mistaken for intuition? Yes. But are you attacking the problem or your life or the situation on a higher level? Well, the answer is actually no, because yeah. you're, you're just working off of your basic instincts. Yeah. But people never really get that deep. Dude. Yeah. yeah. I completely agree with you, especially like, yeah, stuff like follow your intuition or these like isms that we often hear in the world. Ooh, the isms. And then yep. you like, you ask someone like, oh, like, what is your intuition? Like most people that have asked that question can't really define it or really articulate it. So, and then you're like, okay, so you're going to base your life decisions on this abstract idea that you can't even verbalize to yourself, let alone to me. Yeah. And you use that as a justification for like decisions. Yeah. I w- like, I'm not going to judge you and that's dope, but it's kind of like be <laughs> cognizant, of be that. cognizant of that. Yeah. Be aware. Yeah. And like our instincts as human beings, if, if you all, I don't know if you, let's okay let's say for argument's sake you believe in evolution right our instincts are for survival it's not necessarily thriving our instincts were made uh, in an evolutionary process of trying to survive from animals from other people absolutely. from other from tribes the from, from the environment fucking, yeah. yeah absolutely from starvation and those instincts have led us this far and gotten us to survive mm-hmm. but i think as the world changes and adapts we need to be also mindful of the fact that we need to change and adapt. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And we see it in like every aspect of, of I guess, life where we chase what's natural. We mm-hmm. chase what we're used to. We chase what's quote unquote like correct. And we, we do things that will have like negative impacts and we justify them 
through these isms that we don't quite understand but oh i heard so and so say oh so, I, okay, yeah. like oh i read it in this book and it's like yeah cool but like understand the limitations of everyone else and yourself and understand that you need to come outside of yourself often and really kind of like push yourself beyond what's easy you know what i mean yep 100 percent. but then you get into these really deep conversations of like okay our primal brains are like we're supposed what are we supposed to do we're supposed to stay alive yeah pass our knowledge that we've get, gathered onto yeah. the next generation yeah that's all we're supposed to do we're supposed to have kids pass on knowledge so our you know our the next generation can be better that's all we're supposed to do that's yeah. literally it yeah it's the same shit lions are supposed to do it's yeah. to say like that's we are primal humans okay so there's a couple things so i agree there's a couple things i want to dive into there first off being when you always ask someone like why do you think this way? Um, what are your thoughts around this? Why are you doing this? Here's the tell. Like, here's the tell. The tell is like, first off, you can think something, and thinking is really easy. Yeah. Like, think like you can think a thousand thoughts, yeah. and it's there's no friction there. Yeah. When you vocalize something, that's thinking out loud. So there's another level of process. So like, I have a million thoughts going in my head. Like, we we think at like 700 words per minute. I can only speak at like 40. Uh-huh. So I'm actually there's a lot of process happening here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 So if I vocalize it, I've thought about it a little bit more. I've articulated a little bit more. Now I can actually put it out into the world. Okay. Cool. So and then from vocalizing it is writing it. And that's why I never, I mean, I never understood this until I was out of school, but it was like, that's why you write essays. Cause you have to refine thought, refine thought, refine thought, refine thought from thinking to speaking to writing. Right. And that's, that's the evolution of thought. And then once you have those revi- refined thoughts, you can start to bounce them off of each other. And that's how, you know, that's how we've gotten to where we are at as a civilization. Yeah. That's why writing was so impactful. So if you ask, hey, uh, why do you want to have a kid yeah. or like why uh, why are you with that person or why did you choose this career path or like these big macro questions right and it comes down to like well, well because at the end of the day um, like I want to have a kid <laughs> like you know, so like, <laughs> you know like I want to I feel like and you're like okay yeah. so you're not past the point of like so you had a thought yeah. and you can't vocalize it yet yeah. which means you really haven't thought this thing through <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think you should do it. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's so true. And I think to just build on your point, I think those things that you mentioned, like, oh, this is the way life is and this is why we're alive. Um, and I can get super weird about this sometimes. My friends are like, oh, here we go. <laughs> but I'm like, that's what, that's what we were. I yes. think life uh, beyond us is, is a process of evolution. So... And I think right now it's such an exciting time. It's a scary time as well in terms of what's, what's possible, what the human being is capable of, uh, the intersection of you know, things like artificial intelligence, biotechnology, nanotechnology, and how that will influence like, being human, what it means to be human now. It's probably going to mean something that's very different. And I think, look, the last few centuries have been a good run. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's, it's, it's kind of scary to imagine that, oh, like, oh shit, actually, there might be something that's coming that we have never experienced before that will change the dynamic of everything. Because mm-hmm. think about it, man, like, progression is exponential. Yeah. So it took us hundreds of years to go, like, to get to, like, the steam engine. It took us a couple of decades to get, like, okay, these steam engines are not good. Fewer decades to start flying. Even fewer decades to get on the moon. And so, like, you think about, like, okay, this is where we are now. And to be human will mean something very different in the future. Yeah. And it's not, like, it's not really, it doesn't matter whether you understand it or whether you like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's going to happen. Yeah. And I think with that will also come kind of rethinking these things that you're thinking about, these things that you're talking to where mm. people do things on the basis of like, oh, that's how it has been. Uh, instinctually, that's what you kind of have to do, I guess. But I think... I think. I think <laughs> uh, but I think as the world changes and the world progresses and we evolve into, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if we're going to be here for that. Like, yeah, I don't know. But I know it's changing. It is 100% changing. Fuck, there's so many points there. Um, the first one being... Yeah, like you ask someone older than you because mentorship is a real thing. Like yeah. mentorship is powerful. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But it's like I always take that with such a grain of salt. So I'm like, okay, yeah. so this is a 
okay, so I kind of, so in the 80s or the 60s or whatever it was, or the 40s, the 50s, whatever it was, this is how you operated. This is how you attained success. Mm -hmm. And this is how you sustained it over those decades. Okay, that's really interesting. I'm going to look at those mechanisms and look at those tools and look at those methodologies and ideologies and say, okay, that got that person there in that sequence of events in that scenario in that time like that none of that like none of that may cross over yeah. maybe it all crosses over but i'm just saying go with the understanding and be open-minded to the fact that none of that may mean anything dude that is so so true i wholeheartedly agree with that i think one of the best one of the the best oh i guess one of the best conversations I ever heard, this guy went to um, like this program and this guy was was talking and he's like, take, it was like a, a tech conference and yeah. he was talking like, take everything with a grain of salt, especially from mentors or anyone giving you advice because they speak from their perspective on their current conditions. Yeah. Because if it was as easy as like, well, okay, well, how did Steve Jobs do it or Bill Gates? You can't do that because the conditions are different. different. The timing is different. The opportunity is different. The world is different. The world is different. And even at a much smaller scale, even whoever you may know that's closer to you, there's a lot of value in what they say, yes. But don't take it as a definitive truth that's universal to every situation. And I think being able to, to identify something that's valuable as opposed to definitive, universally true mm -hmm. is super important, man. And I think people get down this rabbit hole to the point where they don't even value the information. They value the person that's giving them the information. And that person can do no wrong in their eyes, mm -hmm. which I just find to be so wild. But mm -hmm. And ignorant. And, and so ignorant, man. And it's kind of like information is abundant, right? You can get it from people that have gone before you 100%. But understand that you are unique, your conditions are unique. It's more about application as opposed to well, duplication. You know what I mean? Ooh. Apply that knowledge to your situation. Don't duplicate that knowledge and think we'll get the same result because you're using a different formula. The inputs are different. Your situation is different. The timing's different. Yes. Wow. Um, so many directions to go. Here's the one. Okay. That's why we tell stories. Yeah. That's why stories are, that's why I'm here right now. That's mm -hmm. why self hired does what they do. Yeah. It's all storytelling. The, the value of that, why storytelling is important is because advice actually doesn't mean shit for all the reasons you and myself just explained. Yeah. Timing is different, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, articulating experience yeah. means the world. Because it's like, it's like I took one apple and I gave it to you. Here's my advice. Here's an apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus like here's an orchard of 100 different fruits. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's so valuable. That gives you infinite, you know, infinite possibilities. Yeah. And yeah. guess what? What if there, that, there's too much sugar in that apple and you can't even eat it? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? What if that apple doesn't apply to you at all? It's, listen, an apple is great, but it's not going to do for you what an orchard can. Exactly. And that's why storytelling is important in my humble opinion. I, I completely know. agree with that, man. I actually, uh, I was reading a book recently that put that into a, a similar analogy. Mm. Whereas like the reasons you- I hope beings, it was better because mine was shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a fire, man. That was a fire analogy, bro. That's a five out of five analogy let's right go, there. Let's Top go, let's go. Top five analogy. <laughs> Top five. <laughs> but basically um, in this book, uh, it's called The Fourth Age. I would highly, highly recommend. But basically it talks of human beings passing down information through stories said it was useful to know that if you pull uh, an animal by its tail that you won't survive but you have to survive that to tell the next person mm -hmm. now what that means is you apply that information and insert animal you don't make it the exact same situation because <laughs> you won't be in that same situation yeah. so don't see a lion and say oh like the guy that told the story said it was a cheetah so it's okay if i do it to a lion <laughs> and i think that's kind of how i think about <laughs> about like advice and stuff yeah. it's like yo apply it and don't try to duplicate the situation yeah you know what i mean yeah. because you, you can't recreate the conditions no. what the journey that you went through i won't go through no nope. Uh, we we could be twins, bro, and like you, we would have completely different worlds. We would have completely different conditions, completely different like scenarios, timing, all these things. So I say advice is very very powerful, but it's more about the application to a specific situation, which is the context that you're experiencing, as opposed to looking at it as a universal truth. Yeah. Like if I say, yo, 
I don't like olive shirts. It's kind of like, oh, okay, cool. If I say, yo, I wore an olive shirt once and I wasn't really feeling it, then it's, then it's, it's a different, different thing, different. you know what I mean? Yeah, and it means something completely different as well. Yeah, I like your shirt though. Shout out South High. Yeah, shout out South High, absolutely. Yeah, shout handmade, guy, South High. handmade garments made shout here in Kevin. Vancouver. Shout out both the Kevins, actually. Both the Kevins. Those Kevin Hong, Kevin Wong. Yeah. Plug. We need to start plugging more on this podcast. Yeah, we do. Um, okay, cool. Let's backtrack here because you had a couple points. We had a couple times we could go left, we turn right. I want to go back to those forks in the road. All right. One of those forks in the road was, okay, evolution of the brain, primal. Yeah. Um, Neuralink. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about at all? Ever heard of that? Uh, is, is that the... No, it's not the Elon Musk yeah, joint. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's the Elon it Musk is. joint. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. I like putting you on the spot like that. That's good. Yeah. Um, I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> pass, no pressure. Pass. pass. <laughs> Quick, off the dome. Off yeah, the dome. off the dome. Come um, on, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> um, come on, bro. I, know, I just met you 30 minutes ago. I know he knows this. I know he knows this. Yeah. So that's the similar concept of like... So we have wetware, mm. our brains, our hands, or shit like that. That develops the, through evolution, if you believe in that, whatever you want to subscribe to, right? We've changed. As humans, we've changed. We used to be shorter. They say Jesus, if he existed, was like 4'11". I don't know. You know, we've, we've grown in height. So from that, we've, we've, our, our brains have developed. Our wetware has changed yeah. tremendously. Yeah. The concept I think you touched on a little bit there is that we, we actually can't keep up. With the exponential growth of our economy, the exponential growth of our environment, our society, our wetware can't keep up with that. We can't keep up with technology. Mm-hmm. Period. So Elon's thing is so. So hold on, let me go back a bit. Okay. Why is that a problem? That's a problem because now we're living in an environment where, you know, food is abundant. Yeah. So my primal brain, even my my natural habitual brain, like I, I grew up uh, in not a great situation, so food wasn't abundant. Mm-hmm. So I constantly, through the first 12, 13, 14, 15 years of my life, was like, if I can get food, I'm mm-hmm. eating the fuck out of all of it yeah. now. Yeah. Because I don't know when my next meal is, right? Right. And historically, that's been true for humans. Yeah. You know, you're going to stock up. Yep. Um, and you're going to try to get as much fat on you so you will survive through the winter. And that's what we're, we're wired for. That doesn't serve us today. I can get a Big Mac for $3. Yeah. <laughs> crazy you know what i'm saying like we food is in such abundance now however that primal instinct is still serving us to say hey stock up on that shit stock up on that shit because you know what you might die when the winter comes when the winter comes guess what superstore is still open Mm -hmm. like superstore is open four seasons okay you're good (laughs) yeah (laughs) you're gonna be all right so with that it's like oh see that's one thing that's on a that's on a, um, a basic level if we go to a little a little bit more of an upper echelon level of like in terms of thinking what's the problem with our wetware well, the problem with our wetware is now we're in information age. As you said, information is abundant. Information is absolutely everywhere. So it's like, okay, well, how quick can I input it to my brain? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So you could argue different things of like, well, don't memorize, understand. And yeah. There's different shortcuts there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a bandwidth problem. Like I just can't input information into my brain and process it quick enough. I just can't. Well, not today. But funny, uh, today I saw there's an article that DARPA, are you familiar with DARPA? See, now I shot one at you. You yeah. knew. Now you shouldn't want to mean. No, no, no. It's not like, okay, so basically DARPA is uh, the U.S. In, like defense arm. Mm. Uh, pretty much the entity that created the internet as we know it, mm. right? So today uh, they successfully they were testing two, two teams of researchers. Today? Today. I, I, saw, I saw the article today. Uh, I think it's very recent from this week. Two teams of researchers were testing a memory chip that could, I think, was prolong memory or extend memory. And it's implanted into your brain. Just like a little tidbit there. But okay, yeah, yeah, you're okay, good. Okay, okay, all right. I didn't know that. I need, I need, I need, I need, Dude, to, get, I you, I need to get into your information channels, okay? Bro, you, and you, I need to get into your information no, channels. Bro, bro, relax, relax. Send me relax. those links. <laughs> relax. So, <laughs> so the problem is bandwidth. There's a solution right there. Where I was going with that is like to build on what you're just saying there. You said DARPA? What'd you say? DAPA? DARPA? Oh, DARPA, yeah. DARPA? Yeah. yeah. Defense. Yeah. So DARPA, um, it's the defense arm of the United States government. Okay. And so basically, like, yeah, their most famous invention would probably be the Internet. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So they're coming up with some stuff. I wrote that down. I'll go back to that. Yeah. So the problem is our wetware on a primal level and on a higher level thinking is bandwidth. So what do we do about it now? Because information's so abundant, it's on the internet. Shout out DARPA, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apparently is what this man's telling me. <laughs> um, 
And so now it's like, okay, well, how do we add on to the capacity of our brain to input, to increase the bandwidth of technology? Because we have the worst fucking exchange of um, information possible. Mm -hmm. And what that medium is right now is these little things. Yeah. It's our thumbs, yeah. right? For those that are just listening, it's just literally your thumbs. It's texting. That's terrible in terms of speed, right? Yeah. Um, so it's how do we ex ex uh, expand our bandwidth? We have those three layers of our brain. What if there was a fourth? What if it was called Neuralink? Mm -hmm. And what if that could give us a direct link into the internet yeah. and give us a direct link into all the knowledge we could possibly need oh. that was physically implanted in us hmm. um, to interact with our current wetware infrastructure. Okay. So the integration of technology in our biological selves could be the fourth layer of our brain. Mm -hmm. I forgot where I was going with that. But that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Okay, so this can... This can go in two very different directions. Cool. So, like, <laughs> like what sounds more interesting to you? So, there's a lot of theories around that say that this isn't the most enlightened we've been, and therefore, like, to put it the way you said it, that this isn't the most our brains have been open. Mm -hmm. And then the alternate direction is discussing, like, the technology and, like, what's possible with, like, Neuralink and AI in general. So, like, which... which Hold on. Gonna... Okay, listen. I know, I, know, I know you're on my podcast here, but, yeah. like, take it where <laughs> you want to go here because I think that I want to touch on the history of what you're talking about. I'll let you explain it. Okay. Um... And then what does that actually mean for us? Like if this isn't actually our most heightened state of consciousness, yeah. then what was? Um, oh, okay. So what was? So we're talking. Past listen, past? listen. For those, I mean, I, kinda, I have a little bit of history on what you're talking about yeah. here, but for someone has no idea what you're talking about, what are you talking about? Okay. What do you mean? This is where the best we've ever been, no? Uh, arguably, yes, but not conclusively. Because you have to understand, like, history is not a, is not a definitive truth. History is a constant progress. So today we know way more than we would have known 300 years ago, but then they spoke of the same history, mm -hmm. right? So stuff like there's certain uh, archaeological feats of mankind that we still can't explain with today's technology. And that is oh, not we're like... Oh, getting, <laughs> right we're getting into the weeds right now. We're getting into the weeds right now. Yes, Bro, yes, People are going to watch it like, yo, this guy's yeah. crazy. Oh, shit. He's, yeah. oh, he's off it. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, but I'm just no. saying... No, speak your conclusively truth. Conclusively speaking, <laughs> these things cannot be proven or yes. disproven. No, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know what I mean? Going. And so... And, and I'm just so fascinated about it. Like, I'm, I'm just a big nerd about it. Whoa, don't I, divert here. Let's learn. What are you talking about? Okay, okay cool. Archaeological feats. We've done well, certain I, things we can't explain. What are you talking about? Just, I, I mean, like, the... You know, some of the the great, the, the oh, man, like some of the, the great engineering, like if you look at the Egyptian pyramids, the size of those things and the distance that they had to travel to, the precision, the alignment, the, you know, there's certain things that they were able to map out, like the stars so perfectly in an age where they shouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and today, what's that technology that they're using? Um, I think it's like some sort of infrared where they can scan uh, into buildings and scan yeah, into yeah, tombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think last year they like they found that there was like a part of the pyramid that was like hollow. Yeah, it's just, like it's, it's like a box or it's something. It's geothermal, right? Yeah. 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 And it's kind of like, yo, how? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like the precision of it all, like. These things are mathematically precise mm -hmm. in a time where that shouldn't have been possible. Yeah, we didn't have the, we didn't technically didn't have those formulas. We didn't have those methods. Yet. Yeah, I mean, even today, if I said, okay, let's get 300 people, I get 150. I know you get 150. You know, right? Assuming that this is just basic knowledge, right? And we say, yo, let's go build a pyramid. Good luck. And we don't. We can't use cranes or we can't use anything that currently exists today. I don't know about you, fam. But <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm out. I'm like, just going to right now, like, I'm, out. Like, <laughs> I'm out. Like, I'm out of here. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't even claim to know anything about it. I just claim to be fascinated by it. Tell you like, what, you're on a podcast, like, it's, it's a license to be wrong. So don't, don't worry about being right. All I do is <laughs> Dude, hop on this mic and be wrong. Josh, let me tell you something, bro. I'm more wrong than I am, right? <laughs> and most people don't really know anything. There's a difference between what I believe and what I know. So uh, it's one thing for me to say, look, I believe this, but me saying that I know this is very different. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people kind of get that confused that they think by, because by virtue of them believing something, it therefore makes it a universal truth that we should all subscribe to, understand, 
or you know follow yeah. and I, i've always kind of been very cognizant of that look there's things that i believe that i know are outlandish mm-hmm. but i don't also don't think that it's true for everyone right right you know right something I mean? could be true for me something can be true for me all the time yeah okay let's double back <clears throat> one more time um what does that mean what are you trying to say by the simple fact of listen there was certain architectural feats that we don't even know are possible so we may not be at the height like there was also some information that came out that said the sphinx is actually like some ridiculous amount of thousands of years older Old, than, yeah, yeah, than yeah, we yeah. originally that, yeah. thought and i have no details around that yeah. um but it's like okay so we didn't think they had it at that period in time now what if that period of time is twice as far back yeah and we still didn't know Dun, dun, dun. Something's going on there. I don't want to sound like Mr. Conspiracy or anything like <laughs> bro, that. Bro, we look so wild right now. Like, super <laughs> wild, bro. Like, <laughs> super wild. I'm going to pivot in a second. Yeah. Don't you worry. But. Nah, bro. We got, we got to do this for the couple. <laughs> <laughs> we got to speak for the six other people out literally, there. Literally. The literally. <laughs> start going down Reddit streams and shit. Oh, my God. These guys are crazy. Yeah. The actual age of the Sphinx people are Googling right now. Yeah. I got you. I Listen, I don't claim to know a damn thing. I just I just entertain, entertain uh, possibilities. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, man. And I think my biggest takeaway from that is we know nothing. Yes. And the things that we think we know, we know until it's disproven. Because the scientific method is kind of like, it has to be, you, you should be able to disprove it if the results show it. Yes. Like something de- that deviates from what you thought, right? Mm-hmm. And I think the idea of like this universal, this is the way it is, this is the way it happened is so dangerous and it's so bad for progression. Because for the longest time, archaeologists, uh, I was watching this one documentary where it's like, as an archaeologist, if you didn't necessarily subscribe to what was the, the common knowledge, like you wouldn't get any funding for your research. And then like now 50, like hundreds of years later, or like decades later, people are like, oh, actually that guy was right. Or like very recently, uh, apparently there was this one archaeologist that went through the Amazon and you reported seeing like huge vast cities with lots of people and a lot of things going on. Um, and then 200, ye- uh, 200 years later, uh, other people went through that and they didn't see anything at all. And they're like, man, this guy's full of shit. Like this guy was just making this up, trying to look cool. Now what they found is that in the Amazon, there were huge cities, like possibly 20 million people, but it grew at such a rate that it covered everything. Wow. And, but the common knowledge for hundreds of years was like, no, it's inhabitable. You can't grow anything there. You can't live there. Wow. Um, and it just shows you how fallible history is. You know what I mean? How, yeah. how fallible our knowledge is. And uh-huh. that our knowledge can always change. And I think we should be open to that knowledge changing. 100%. I think, th- okay, yeah. So history is just his story, first and foremost. That's just someone's iteration. And Bars. We, oh, <laughs> I, stole, I stole that from some rapper, 100%. Bars. Um, so like that's that's all that is it's just someone's iteration and we know from science like eyewitness testimonies are the worst testimonies like they're the worst like they're not factual and that's been proven over and over again every time we have a memory we replay that memory in yeah. our head that memory changes yeah. so it's like yeah history's full of shit bro one hundreds have you ever been in a conversation let's say you're out with your buddies and something happened <laughs> and then they tell the story and you're just yeah. like <laughs> all of a sudden the chick was twice as fine yeah bro he yeah. beat three guys up yeah. at the same time with yeah. one hand and you're yeah. just like uh, I don't know I don't know yeah. Yeah. I hear you so, sure. so, yeah. so those stories like change all the time and I think to, to relate that back to a more reasonable conversation <laughs> is <laughs> is um, <laughs> is that a pivotal point in my life and probably something that's happened maybe since we started this podcast a year ago is like just being divine fucking why am i using that word again just unparalleled acceptance yeah. of the fact that i very i i don't know anything and that there's people out there that even you as a few years you know like as 30 year olds as 40 year olds as 50 year olds these people still know nothing and that has to be okay. Like they always say, respect your elders, respect your elders. And I'm like, I would actually argue with that in terms of like, yes, respect your elders, but there's a ton of people out there, probably the majority of humans that have just been doing it wrong 100%. for like 60 years. 100%. And then there's other people that have gone a hundred different directions, reiterated yeah. their life a bunch of times and are just sitting there looking at it all like, huh, that's mm-hmm. interesting. There's a bunch of paths that I, did, I took in my life yeah. and now I'm sitting here in this position and now I'm going to try something else. Like, 
I'm going to respect the hell out of that person. Yeah. But like someone that's just been grinded into their methodology and their ideology, like, well, I don't understand why I have to respect that. I, I will respect your experience, but I don't have to really necessarily respect that it's right. So the point in my life where I was like, okay, nothing I know is technically correct because yeah. frankly, I can't verify any of my information sources True. because I'm just going down rabbit holes and, yeah. and I'm talking to people and that shit's unverified. It's all this kind of like mystical amalgamation of thoughts yeah. at the end of the day yeah. that I have then input and regurgitated that's now become my opinions and my thoughts, which all of you guys hear all the time, which mm-hmm. is like, great. But it's like, okay, now I can move forward having this like, why do I want to use the word divine so much? Um, having this intense thought yeah. of, oh, it's cool that I don't know anything. That's cool. 100%. That's cool. Yeah. Because no one does. No one <laughs> So no why are you knows. fronting? <laughs> Dog, and you know what the thing is? I think, I don't think, <clears throat> sorry, I don't think that age is directly correlated to knowledge. I don't think it's a direct correlation. I don't think it's like, oh, you get older, you get wiser. Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. I think experience is, and I think action is. And yeah. I think, you know, some people do the same thing for 80 years, and they're stuck in, on this, like, hamster wheel going over and over. Some people, it happens once. Uh, or they come from a certain situation that teaches them something, and from that day on, it changes. But I also do think that this is a very old way of thinking. Look, maybe in the Roman ages, uh, that had a bit more merit because life was so simple. You're either a farmer, you're at war, or you're like you're in the Senate. Mm-hmm. There's like a very limited <laughs> amount of things there that you could do. There are six things you can do. Pick one. There's literally six things you could do, of which most people would have to do all of them. So. You'd go to school when you're younger, you go to war in your middle ages, you come back and start a business or you work or you, or you farm, and then maybe you become a philosopher or a thinker and you sit on a senate, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in that sort of world, yeah, sure, like age is everything uh-huh. because that person has gone through the exact same steps, uh, the exact same steps that the next person is going to go into. But today the world is just so robust, man. There's just so much going on. Um, and life is different. And so I think that's a very simple way of thinking that, well, just because someone is qualified as knowing more simply because they've had more years. You've literally, you just don't die. That's literally all you had to do. You literally just did a die. And I don't think that qualifies. So, like, so that's interesting. Yeah, it's like you, literally the only thing you did was not die. That yeah. wasn't even your fault. You didn't choose that. <laughs> you didn't choose to not die. You right. just didn't die. But back in the day, it was like, oh, you didn't die. You must have done it right. Because you went through war. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, you must have been smart enough to figure some shit out because you're not dead. You know, you didn't starve yourself, kill yeah. yourself. Someone didn't kill you. Like, okay, you've gone through this game of power a certain yeah. way and gone through war and life. So, like, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, you're like, okay, the whole, like, Greek model doesn't work anymore. And no. I could, on a fundamental, like, I could be like, yep, no, nah, it doesn't work. I think the Greeks actually had it right. I think they grew up and they were students. Mm-hmm. And then they went to war, as you said. So you learned, you studied, yeah. and then you went to war, you experienced then you came back, you started a business, you became a worker. If you got past that stage in life, past that age in life, then you went to the Senate mm-hmm. and you became a politician. Once you retired from politics or you know social standing or whatever it may be, then you became a philosopher, right? right. Yeah. I think on a fundamental lev- level, we can still follow that model in a sense. Hmm. Not of like lane, 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 occupying this, now I'm here, then I do this, yeah. then I go here, but on a fundamental level of like, the the humility that comes with being a student, yeah. Then the whirlwind of shit that you go through when you go into war, yeah. Applying those lessons in your next stage of life, and then giving back to your community, and, yeah. and then ultimately pushing thought when you're older. One hundred percent. So I think that Greek model does work. I, yeah, and that's and that's what my point. It worked because at that time. The world was, you know, it was a much simpler time. I'm just saying it doesn't work for us, but I'm not saying that it's not the right model because I would agree with you and say, look, I mean, they did have like gladiator fights where they'll just like throw people in there. Oh, shit was so maybe, yeah, like, up. So maybe, like, like, shit was wrong. fucked up. <laughs> but they might have been onto something. <laughs> like, yeah, shit was very fucked up. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but like, I, I get what you mean. That, like, yep, in that regards to the cycle of attain knowledge, grow, prove yourself out in the world, yep. then share that knowledge. Cool. 
the throwing people in the gladiator ring and just like Maybe fight to the death. Christians and Let's shit. not do that. Yeah, know, yeah. just like, like going village. Like, bro, they were wild and savage. They were wild. You ever yeah. seen Three Hundred? I have. Great movie. Yeah, crazy. You should. Uh, I was watching this thing on Netflix. It's called the Ro- like I think Roman Empire Roman or something. Empire. Oh, I get way yeah. that type of stuff. Dude, like it's so funny. Like people be like, oh, let's watch something fun. I'm like, yo, this is a documentary about like ancient <laughs> <So> Rome. <cool. laughs> let's watch this documentary yeah. about the Amazon forest, and then we'll get to white chicks. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hear you. Yeah. Um, I gotta bring it back, dude. Let's we bring went, it back, bro. Coming, went in a couple little. <laughs> let's bring that all back. Bring that so, all back. So I get it. So okay. So so um, you know, Greek. Um, culture yeah. and the Amazon and AI and wetware and psychology. Yeah. Um, can you just tell me about SFU, man? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know, SFU is mad cool. I think the thing with with uh, with school is there's so many resources, but they're not gonna look for you. So you went all the way through. Oh yeah. 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 Business. Uh, uh, communication. Oh, so I majored in communication, minored in business, and I did uh, program and innovation. So just like, yep, yeah. I just I just looked at a certain individual in the room that just graduated from those exact things. Oh, Anyways, crazy. moving forward, yeah. <laughs> <That's what's up. laughs> thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs all up. around to the whole room. Gang, um, gang, 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 super gang, gang. Yeah. So uh, you went through the full years. Yeah. Good experience. Great experience. You strike me as the type of person yeah. that would be too anxious and ambitious and forward thinking to stick out those years. Dude, let me tell you, school, first of all, I think school in the traditional sense is a scam. And so you need to know, like in the sense that the, the knowledge you learn over how much time they give you isn't necessary. It's, a lot of the time it's pretty arbitrary. So I was very anxious and I was very ambitious. Nice. And my, uh, I guess my <laughs> solution to that is I would only go to lectures for things I cared about. Um, I would only study if I had an exam or I was writing an essay. Mm-hmm. Every other time, I'm, I'm exploring something or I'm reading, but I'm not necessarily reading that, that thing that I want to, like it's not necessarily studying it's all the coursework. time. It's not coursework. It's not coursework. But another thing that I think I did is going to talk to professors. Like, I was like, yo, you guys charge so much money for this. I'm not just going to be, if I'm, if I'm in the lecture, I'm going to ask you some stuff. Because I'm like, you, you have to know more than anyone here, right? Of course, yeah. So I think my whole thing was like, I wasn't, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, I was always studying or no. Because my thing is like, I would rather invest 20 hours into this course and get like a B plus or in like, B, like B plus, A minus, then invest a hundred hours and get an A. That's like s- such a marginal, that's such a marginal increase for a lot more time spent. Mm-hmm. So I always kind of did the math. It's like, okay, cool. What grade do I want to get? What's the minimum amount of time I can get to, to spend on this to yeah. get this grade? Yeah. And all that other time I'm not doing this. I'm learning something. I'm trying to build something. I'm networking. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. living life. Uh, and that's that's how I did it. And so people are like, oh, you're in school for four years. I'm like, really? If you calculate on like an hour basis, like most of those hours, I was like, <laughs> I was in school for like a year. Man. Like I was in school for like a year yeah. because like I was the type of person where it's like, oh, okay, this semester, I would, I would try and understand the general idea. Maybe go to office hours, go talk to the prof or the TA or whatever. Shout out all the TAs that came through. <laughs> <laughs> when it was like... <laughs> <laughs> this close. <laughs> this close. Shout out all y'all. Um, but then it was kind of like, well, I'm going to invest a marginal amount of time if the difference in results is also marginal. So it's kind of like, man, if I have, like, let's say five courses, because also in my last, like, year, I, t- I took, I took, like, 17 credits, then 19 credits. So I almost kind of did two, like one and a half years almost. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, How many credits is it usually? Well, a full course load at SFU is nine credits. Okay. So. I think I knew that. Yeah. I don't know. Or you can, most people do 12. Yeah. But then I did like 19 and 17. So you so, went hard. Oh, bro. But not really though. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I telling you. Like, semi hard. <laughs> I went semi hard. <laughs> because it's kind of like, okay, I have this exam on this date. What are the things I need to know for this exam? If I don't invest any amount of time, let's say for two months, but for three days I eat, sleep, drink this exam and nothing else. Yeah. That means I had three whole months to do whatever I wanted and I can attain that knowledge in those kind of like three days. those three days. Mm-hmm. 
And then, yeah, like people make the argument, oh, but you forget about it. I'm like, okay, but like you're doing five courses a semester, two or three semesters a year. You're going to forget about it eventually unless you really you're care about, about most it. Of it. You know what I mean? Yep. So for me, it was just kind of like that time value for money is like, okay, where am I going to invest my time? And that's when I started getting involved with front runners and getting involved with like student societies and, yeah. and doing a lot of different things while yeah. I was in school. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I uh, kind of subscribe to the same thing. I looked at it as like a foot in the door. Yeah. That was pretty much it. I just yeah. want to sit at the table. Give me a seat at the table. Yeah. And that's it. And then as soon as I found that I had that seat at the table, I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Like, thank you. Yeah. yeah but I'm good. Yeah. That happened for me after a year. So I went to business school for a year. Oh, wow. Um, and then I was like, I don't have any money. Yeah. First off. Uh, <laughs> so I, I had I had a scholarship the first year, and yeah. then that scholarship ran out of the first year. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll work over the summer, but I have to go into debt. And yeah. When you grow up poor, you don't want to go into debt. Yeah. All that anxiety and all that type of stuff. And I'm like, okay, got to find a way. But all I wanted was to be able to say, yeah, I went to UVic Business School. Yeah. Because guess what? Today, when people ask, hey, where'd you go? UVic Business School. Cool, man. Yeah. Amazing. Because when you're at this level, yeah. people just assume you finished. Yeah. <laughs> I never even have to have that conversation yeah. of like. So now the timeline of my life looks fucked up because like, wait a minute, there should be four more years here, but you didn't, you know, but I never even get to that conversation. It's just yeah. like, oh, I got a foot in the door. I got a seat at the table uh, by going there and attaining that knowledge while I was there networking yeah. the hell out of that. Yeah. And then, you know, because of my fears and because of my anxieties, I went a different direction, which actually paid off in the long term. But it was just that play of like, no, let's get here. Yeah. And then let's frankly extort every resource here. Yep. extort the hell out of this because yep. I may never be back in this situation yeah, yeah. and as soon as I have enough information um, and confidence to go to the next level I'm out so I may have made an ignorant decision at 18, 19 yeah. 100% an ignorant decision however because I took advantage of that situation mm -hmm. I was good Yeah, still regret it but you know because I like finishing things oh, but, yeah, yeah, um, but okay why let me ask you this. So you regret it because you like finishing things, but what is it that you wanted to finish? Like what was the, was the motivation to get that piece of paper or to learn a network? Because if it was a learning network, you did that. You, you, finished, you finished that part. So like which part of it like do you regret? Yeah, so thanks for putting me on the spot right here. So here's, here's the thing. Like a lot of things I realize, uh, like for instance, I had like recently, I started running long distance. Don't worry, this comes back into it. Okay. I, I started running long distance, you know, like half, half a marathon, 10K, 15K. Yeah. And being like, I can run a marathon. I can do it. Yeah. I can do it. Like, this is definitely possible. Yeah. Cool. And I'm like, I'm generally a bigger guy. Like, yeah. you know, not the type of guy that would be running marathons and stuff. I'm like, I could do it. And then I was like, I started talking about it with, um, w with a dear friend of mine. And, and, and he was like, well, cool. That's really cool. And I, no doubt you could do it. But like, why do you want to do it? Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, you hum, you hum, yeah. and then you think about it. You know, I gave him some bullshit answer or something like that. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, you just want to, you just want to do it because you want to be able to say I ran a marathon. True. You just want to be able to say I graduated college. That's it. Like that's the only reason. Now it's kind of like that's that's why I feel as if you know I, I hate quitting things. That's one thing. Did I actually use that for what I needed and get that in a short time frame? Yes, because mm -hmm. I had a similar mindset of you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 four years. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. By 22, I could propel myself to a crazy spot. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste that. Yeah. You know. So I was like, I made a bet, and I was like, okay, if you're gonna leave, by 22 by this year you have to make fifty thousand dollars and be at a spot that will sustain you for 10 years mm. meaning be happy and n i'll say satisfied you know cautiously in a spot where like hey you can grow exponentially this is a spot where you can make that 30 under 30 list or whatever it may yep. be whatever that stupid fucking you know yeah. achievement is, is in your mind yeah. you have to be at that spot be at least yeah. starting in that spot and have and, and, and make 50k that year rather than being down 50k because mm -hmm. I ran the numbers and I was like oh I'll be down 50k Dude. so what if I can just flip that on its head more people and need to do the numbers man. just do the numbers bro and if you can so if you can put yourself in a position yeah. to flip that on its head and have the leverage to win long term mm -hmm. what why do you need it that's what's up so I had no fucking clue how to do that yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing so you may have come to your conclusions out of like smart analytic and you know, okay, put the pieces together. Here's the chessboard. I was just kind of like, fuck it. I can do it. Yeah. So that's that blind ignorance versus like what you were saying earlier about having like a futuristic mindset. 
yeah, like I, I definitely agree. Like understanding how things work and mm-hmm. the mechanics of society and life and understanding that your mortality, et cetera, et cetera. And that's cool. And that's, we kind of came to similar conclusions. Yeah. I came to it from a place of ignorance and confidence. Yeah. But I think, <laughs> I think that's where everyone comes to that place from, because I think you can't think of, you can't try and plan your future without some ignorance or some naivete of like, oh, but oh dude, like of course so I'll much do ignorance, it. Though. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's kind of like, I think you, it's hard, man. It's, it's a balance for sure. But I think your ideas and where you want to be and your aspirations need to sound kind of like, oh, that's pretty, like, how do you think you're going to do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then it gives you something to work towards. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, in, in life, sometimes things work out. Sometimes things won't. But you need to be open to things working out and, and being mentally kind of accepting of those things working out as opposed to like, oh, I'll never amount to anything or oh, nothing is going to happen because life doesn't care. Like the universe doesn't care. Like no, you know what I mean. It's kind of like it's all, it's all, it's all about you. Like what, what do you want to do? What do you believe you, you can that. do? It's all about you. Like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's you. You're stuck up in your own head, and you are. Yeah, you are 100. percent So yeah. cool. You at SFU. Yeah. You get involved with a couple organizations. I'm trying to bring this conversation back down to reality here. <laughs> <laughs> and we took it away. Ooh, went yeah. to the moon. Went yeah. to the moon. Um. Okay, cool. So you went over this, and I'm still trying to figure out this. Like, okay, who, who, who is Buck? What is Buck? What yeah. is Buck? like? What, what is this? I don't understand where this amalgamation of fucking experiences <laughs> is sitting in front of me. I have no clue. It's okay, so I know, man. like, you know, I've heard a couple things. I know that you're, you know, in the fintech space. I know that you. I don't know if you're in this space, but you have some experience around venture capital and, and again, with the streetwear as well as artist management and the creative space. Yeah. Like, oh, there's a ton of shit here. Yeah. Like, what is your life about? Like, what are you working on? What are you building and why are you building it? Uh, I think my life is just a pursuit of my interests. So I've, I've never wanted to, I guess, identify myself as being one thing or anything definitive so like i'm not like oh i'm a music guy or oh i'm a technology guy or oh i'm a fashion guy yeah i'm just kind of like there's things that i'm interested in and i pursue those things wholeheartedly um and it, that's i guess that's how it all amalgamates i guess where it's like a lot of people ask me that like yo like i thought you were into this or i thought you'd do that or i thought you'd do this and i thought like oh i had like this idea of who you were and someone else would have like a completely different idea of who I am. Like, well, that has nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm just living <laughs> <Sorry>. my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been me the whole time. You know what I mean? Like I'm just pursuing the things that I want to pursue. Um, technology being at the forefront of that, music being at the forefront of that, uh, fashion, philosophy, just everything, man. It's like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that because people ask me that sometimes and I'm just like, I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. I can't articulate it in a way, in a conversational way. Uh, I've, ha- I've had certain experiences. I have certain things that I'm into. There's a certain way I think about life and I think about myself and I think about my surroundings. And, and I also came to the conclusion, like, to take this back to a very dark place. <laughs> like that whole death that's cool, thing. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Where it's just like, <laughs> The man, whole dead thing, yeah. It's like, I'm going to go one day. Yeah. But while I'm here... I'm the only thing in my way, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, as long as I wake up tomorrow, the things that, I, that I'm going to do, I'm going to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only thing that needs to happen. Like, I just need to keep on waking up, and everything I want to pursue, I'll pursue. Uh, every milestone that I want to hit, I'll hit. And, yeah, I think it's just that pursuit. And typically just being happy outside of all of those things because I have a strong belief that this is the happiest I'll ever be. You know what I mean? It's not tied to future success. It's not tied to like, oh, when I was young, I'm like, man, I want like 40 under 30, like 30 under 30, 25 under 25. And then I got a 25 under 25. I was like, oh. You got a 25 under 25? Yeah. What? Don't worry about it. Okay. Don't worry about it. Cool. But then it was kind of like one of those things where it's like, oh, I don't feel any different. Like I'm still the exact same way I was yesterday. And so I was like, oh my life i'm gonna be happy and then pursue everything i want to pursue and not be defined by any one thing so if anything fi- like falls or if anything happens in one silo of my life that is not my life in totality mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i'm just gonna be happy i'm just gonna pursue my interests uh i'm gonna try and grow i'm gonna try and learn and that's what i've been doing ever since just a constant uh process of co- like 
living in happiness regardless of what's going on and i don't mean happiness in a like, uh, like a very like uh, way but just like a contentment of like man like i'm really glad to be here yeah you know what i mean grateful there's this you have uh you, you feel gratitude constantly yeah yes okay. yeah cool uh okay i believe you <laughs> i believe you but i'm also yeah. gonna call bullshit <laughs> yeah. i'm also gonna call bullshit yeah, because go for it. You are too intellectual of a person yeah. to not understand life holistically yeah. and have a plan and build infrastructure. So yeah. I don't believe that where you're at, it's just like, yeah, man, I'm having fun. I'm learning. These are the things I'm really interested in and I'm yeah. actively pursuing them. Yeah. Fucking like, cool. Yeah. Like that sounds cool. And I don't not, I, I do believe you. Yeah. But I think that there's truly something deeper than that. I think that you've thought about life holistically and said, okay, if this, if this is the direction I want to go, let's yeah. extrapolate that. I want to be successful in those things. How do I be successful in those things? Yeah. And then reverse engineer it back 100%. to looking at where you're at right now and say, oh, okay, yeah. if I do these things now, yeah. that will lead to those things later. And yeah. it's not that I don't think you're incredibly happy in the space that you're at right now. Yeah. I just think that you've been more thoughtful in your approach on the long term. Yes. So yeah. that being said, right. what are you doing now and why is it going to benefit you later? Okay, uh, and yeah, you, you're totally right about that. I think what I meant to say was that outside of all of these pursuits that I want to do outside of myself, because I think we're, we're, always, we're always evolving. So the things that I like today might not be the things I'll like in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy on the journey of where I want to go, right, right, right. which is separate from the journey itself. My Absolutely. happiness isn't tied to that journey. Right, so tell me, tell me about the journey then. Oh man, the journey. Uh, like what, like... I'm trying to get the blueprint. I'm trying to get the blueprint. <laughs> I don't even know, bro. You told me. <laughs> you tell me what the blueprint is. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily know the blueprint, uh, and I can't define it for you. Cool. I know where I want to be at certain stages of my life. I know that the one thing I want to do is own my time. Like That's the most important thing to me, to get to a point where I completely 100% own my time, where I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's my biggest pursuit. Like That's like... Mm -hmm. and goal outside of everything else right it's kind of like own my time um venture out in in technology like really really grow something um in the technology space really grow something in the music space i think those two avenues are, are kind of what my blueprint is okay take me a decade down the line paint a picture I'm grilling so hard take right now because I know line, you bro. don't want to go here. Oh, let's go. Let's take it there. Like I want, I, I, man, take it down the line. Um, I don't even know, man. That's that's funny. Take it down the line. Like don't like don't be like how specific? Like how specific should should we go into this? It's a fact. You can't see more than eighteen months in the future. That's this a fact. That's a fact. I'm mm, not asking you to really. Look. That's a fact. Yeah. Too many variables in today's world. Yeah. Where did I read that? Ray Dalio. I don't know. Um, I should be able to remember that. That's why I need that neural link. Anyways, <laughs> shot, I need to go hit up DARPA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, just hit the bump. Yeah. Like DM them or hey, something. Do you, can I get that chip or is that under lock? Um, yeah. I'm not asking you to, to foresee into the future, but I'm like, right. what if you're building an infrastructure now? Yeah. What does that infrastructure look like in 10 years? What do you, to prophesize or to dream for a second, what do you yeah. want it to look like? Man, what I want it to look like is me and everyone around me will be well taken care of. Um, however, how, whatever that means, whatever that means, yeah. whatever that means, it could be, I mean, financial, whatever that means. Like, but like me and everyone around me taken care of, contributing something to the world, uh, particularly in, in Zimbabwe, where, where I'm from, born and raised. Uh, are in the area of entrepreneurship and innovation because I think social mobility is the single most important thing, especially in, in developing countries. Because everything else, food scarcity, healthcare, you know, education, it's it's all tied to social mobility. And I often think that like no matter how hard you work, no matter how smart you are, you're only able to do certain things because largely based on things that are outside of your own control that you didn't necessarily choose. So I think creating more and more of that opportunity is something down the line in 10 years that I'll be looking to do um, for, I don't know how that looks like, but that's always been a goal for mine. It's kind of like, man, I don't necessarily think like I'm, I'm the smartest guy or the most hardworking, but it's kind of like, 
if you have a certain opportunity and you do something with it, I, it, I think that other people deserve an opportunity too. Mm-hmm. Or at least maybe not deserve because we don't, no, no one deserves anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I can do something that creates opportunity, mm-hmm. I think I'll, yeah, I'll be You happy. think that's a win? I think that's a win. Okay, cool. All right, kind of got the answer I wanted. Kind of not really, but it's cool. Yeah. I'll let it to rest. So, <laughs> social mobility. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know what that means. Incredibly powerful concept. Mm-hmm. What does social mobility mean to you? Uh, I think social mobility to me means not being bound to things that are beyond your control. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you don't choose what family you grow up in. You don't choose the financial resources that you have to your disposal. And all of these things have a large impact, so they're not determinant. Uh, of your future in the sense that it, it it's not set in stone mm-hmm. that if you start somewhere you'll end up there mm-hmm. but if you if you look at the the data for a lot of people they, that's the reality you know what I mean it's yeah. kind of like if there's no space for social mobility if you if you can't and there's lots of like literally hundreds of millions of people that don't go to school that never get an education and then that forever limits kind of the the potential yeah. of what they can reach yeah. you always have the outliers of course no no of course. one no one will refute that yeah. but i think on a large scale resources today are so abundant mm-hmm. that if there was i guess if there was more equality is not the right word what word am i looking for here Equity. Yes. There was more equity. Uh, equity. The world would be in a much better state than it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is not some oh, okay, well, how do you save the world type thing? But I think that there's structures that can be put in place and there's processes uh, to kind of create more opportunity for social mobility. If you think about the fact that, and this is a very complex idea, I think it was in 2012, uh, 300 and some like 321. I don't remember the exact number of people co- controlled more wealth than like half of the population of the earth. Yep. And today that number is down to, I think it was like 62, two years ago. Yep. So the concentration of wealth keeps moving into one side. Yep. And I mean, like, I, I, w- I, wouldn't, I, w- I wouldn't say that I'm not a capitalist because I feel like for the stuff that we're into, you kind of, I understand. you know, you, you kind of have to be. Mm-hmm. But I think that there's also an element of equity that, that needs to be looked at there to say, hey, yeah, like let's aggregate these resources and you know get your go up, do do your thing. But there's also I love, a greater quality. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, pause, pause, pause. Yeah. So you said, what did you just say? You said, you said aggregate. Oh my god, you said get your guap, and then what did you say after that? What did you say? After that? <laughs> You said aggregate something or other. Uh, what do you say? No, I'm just saying like you know, aggregate your resources. <laughs> so, pause right there. so like, yeah, homie, get your guap and you know, aggregate your resources into a certain direction. Like yeah. you just pair those two things, and that's beautiful. Yeah, I didn't mean to right. cut you off. <laughs> Is <laughs> that balance is like, yo, on one hand, get your guap, and on the other hand, make sure you aggregate your resources <laughs> and, and, you know, and fulfill your capitalistic needs or yes. desires. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, there's a ton of shit to, to, <laughs> to dive in there. there. Yeah, get your guap. Aggregate get your resources. Guap, it's like, um, fuck bitches, get money, disregard females, acquire currency. Yeah, I remember when someone said that. Yeah. I didn't say it. Christopher um, Wallace. Christopher Wallace. Yeah. 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 Um, Okay, cool. There's a guy named by the name of Jeremy Rifkin. You ever heard that guy? Yes, got one on you. Sick. That's what this. This is all this, <laughs> this is, is about. This is all that's been. It's just an ego. Just waiting to get battle. one thing. Okay, that's yeah. all it's about. Um, yeah. no, I'm just joking. It, it does relate back. So there's this guy named Jeremy Rifkin. Please Google okay. if you need to. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Rifkin spoke at the European. Do you know who you guys need to get? Sorry to cut you off. Yo. You need to get like a Jamie. Do you, do you ever watch the Jamie? Bro, Jeremy we Rifkin have podcast? a fucking Jamie and she's not here right now. And wow. she's going to just hate that she's on blast right now. <laughs> I won't name her by name, but you know who you are. Get here. Anyways, does, that's does all it good. Does it start with the B? It does start with the B. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, moving on. Yeah, B for on blast. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so. All the listeners just got so lost. They were deep in this conversation. This guy named Jeremy Rifkin, he spoke at the uh, European uh, Economic Forum uh, earlier this year. And he was talking about 
uh, zero zero marginal the zero marginal economy essentially and and how we distribute through this fourth industrial or third industrial revolution depending on how you look at it how we distribute wealth and how that needs to change as we move forward to save our planet save our economies save our so- social infrastructure and evolve as a, as a human race so the, the, wow huge things right um, and and in that he actually quoted so I believe it's actually the top nine have as much as the bottom two thirds now. Wow. So that, that's a, that's actually a cause uh, and don't fucking quote me, but that's actually a, an indicator of, of where we're at. The wealth gap is an indicator of where we're at in the economic cycle, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting. He also talks about the zero marginal economy where it's, Anyone can create anything because technology has enabled us to do that. That's why I think Africa is growing so much is because now you have this huge population of people who are extremely intelligent and yeah. untapped, getting them the technology infrastructure to have social mobility. So social mobility to me, I'm obviously very passionate in this space as well. Social, social mobility to me means the ability to move classes freely. Yeah. So if I'm a first class citizen, at my will, I can go down to a fifth class citizen, meaning I can be a rich guy in, in, in Manhattan and mm-hmm. I can go be a monk. Mm-hmm. Cool. It also means I can be a monk and go vice versa. All right. Or I grew up in a low income house and all of a sudden, you know, everyone around me is wealthy, whatever wealth means to you. Right. right? That's what social mobility means to me. Mm-hmm. The quality of opportunity. Yeah. 100 percent. I love yeah. it. Amazing. How do you provide that? What there's so many ways to tackle this problem. Yeah. What does that mean to you? What do you think the solution is that will have the broadest impact? Right. Uh, I, I'll only speak from the context of kind of where I'm from. Yes. I think the advantage that developing countries have is not really an advantage, but I mean you have to kind of look on the bright side, is that technology there is adopted at a much faster rate than here mm-hmm. because it doesn't go through all the stages of development. Yeah. So it's kind of like most people in Zimbabwe started their first phone was a smartphone, right? Which is probably different from most people here where your first phone, you know, you had to kind of go through the thing. But as technology develops, it becomes cheaper to manufacture, it's mass manufactured and moves at a faster rate. So I think tapping, tapping into that, uh, using technology for education, you know, like these kids in Zimbabwe don't, that don't go to school because they can't afford $20 for the term that we would spend like on a meal. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, there's no there's no reason why that should be happening think of all the devices that are made and what about like let's say collecting those devices somehow and transmitting or storing kind of lessons or like very basic literacy type of exercises you know mm-hmm. um so i think education information is the most important thing because information will always be the most valuable resource uh and we've seen that in the in the data age today where information is literally the most valuable resource mm-hmm. um but it's also, I don't want to use the word discouraging. It's going to be interesting to see how that converges with AI. Yeah. Because in the world where we are today, there's already very limited social mobility. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about like only in, in places like Zimbabwe, but I mean even here. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. What happens in a world where most of, most of your ability, physical and cognitive, is done much better at a much cheaper rate by something that never takes sick days, something that can work 24 seven, something that's relatively error free. Mm-hmm. What, and if history has taught us anything, is that capitalism and power will always choose efficiency over humanitarianism. And so it's kind of like, where, where does, you know? What like, does that mean? What does that- For developing countries, wh- what does that mean? What for, not even just for developing countries, yeah. for the future of mankind yeah. that aren't in that 0.01%. Mm. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? So that's it's interesting, not depressing. <laughs> Could be looked at it that yeah, way. I mean, <laughs> um, but it's cool. Um, yeah. There's a guy running for president in the U.S. Andrew Yang? Andrew Yang. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we just have the synergy going. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. We're having a three conversations right now. Yeah. Um, um, the dividend credit, yeah. so universal basic income, right? Yeah. UBI. Yeah. Um, there's a concept behind that that AI will essentially replace the bottom 60% or 50% of our workers that you know don't know how to code or work in creative spaces, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, don't have a computer science degree or not art- artists or creatives. Mm-hmm. So there's a concept behind there that we will need to have that universal basic income yeah. to a certain spot yeah. in order to survive and and 
prosper and for capitalism to work, right? Because yeah. AI is going to replace that. Cool. That's a thought. With that thought there, and I don't know, maybe he wins, maybe he doesn't, I don't really know, but maybe even puts a plant in, uh, plants a seed there. Yeah. Cool, amazing. I love that he's putting that at the forefront. Um, with that, I'm actually, I would disagree and say that I just think that throughout history, we have constantly evolved. When you talk about those industrial revolutions, whether that's steam, whether that's, yeah, uh, coal and steam, or whether that's Texas oil, or whether that's now the information age. Mm -hmm we have constantly evolved and jobs have changed. That was the fear when factories came through, mm -hmm. right? That was the fear when the telephone came through. Holy shit, how are we going to get these messages across now? All, all these jobs are gone. Yeah. Um, that was constantly the fear. I think we're just evolving now and the, the idea of a job will change. Mm, okay, let me rebuttal that a bit. I think what all of these ages and these revolutions in the way that they were different is that if you look at the industrial revolution or even look at things like the phone, there was still a human element to it. Okay. So a human needed to operate the machine. A human needed to fix the machine. A human needed to build the machine. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about AI, and this is a very like abstract concept where some people say we're going to achieve super intelligence in a thousand years, 500 years. We're talking about a time where it's a self-building, self-replicating, mm -hmm. self-functioning, self-coding. Self-learning. Self-learning. Self yeah. The difference between this and every other revolution is that you needed a human element involved mm -hmm. humans still still needed to like do kind of like quality control to build assemble all of these things but in a world where like i said they're not better only cognitively but physically mm -hmm. if you think of like nanotechnology where this mic would be able to break up into 10 million pieces and assemble as a tv or like one solid can assemble into all of these things. You even watch us. too many sci-fi movies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is true, but watch sci-fi movies from the eighties and look at look a at lot today. of it, and at look today. at today. Yeah. And then you see. It. So I'm just saying, like, man. And but I'm with you with the with the whole UBI thing. But I'm I'm just saying that this is different. And like we said, man, evolution happens exponentially. Technology mm -hmm. uh, technology advances exponentially. Absolutely. And so. This is an unprecedented, or it will be an unprecedented time. Already is. Yeah. Already is. Yeah. Um, yeah, history books are rewritten. Economic books are rewritten. These things are just, like, they're not, we can't look at history. But, you know, the thing is, I think history is the best predictor of the future. Sure. Yeah. On an ideological level. Yes. Like, we can see civilizations come to power and go to ruin, and yeah. there's so many things we can take. It's the same thing. There's parallels between that, what you just said, and what we were saying earlier about advice versus experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, these are unprecedented times. Are yeah. there some things that we can draw from here? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. On that AI thing, though, I think it's, at the end of the day, humans always have creativity. Mm. Until, <laughs> until we can actually map out what the symbiotic relationships are. Yeah. Like we don't have the understanding to build the machines that can have that divine knowledge. Divine, fuck. <laughs> um, we don't have, like we can't even map out a brain yet. Okay, like, okay, let me play devil's advocate here. Right. Completely agree. Right. Completely aware of the limitations that we have right now in understanding our consciousness, the brain. The brain is the most complex thing on, on the universe as far as we're concerned, right? Yeah. Have you seen that meme where it's like, <laughs> the brain is the only thing that ever named itself? Pause. Uh, what? Like what? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. You know, I'm about the meme life. Okay, shit. Like, bro, I see. Yeah. I just like. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> save that one. Save. Fucking print it. Put it on the wall. I feel you. Oh man, where was I going with this? Oh wait, what was the last thing you said? Um, uh, creativity and mapping oh, your yeah, brain. Okay. Yeah. So let me give you an example, right? Yeah. Uh, have you ever played any musical instrument? Yeah. Okay. Cool. If you had never heard an instrument before. Or if you had never heard that instrument before, would you have been able to play or even learn? No. Of course now, not. Now, take a machine that can hear every note ever played, yes. ever, yes. and give it an infinite, an infinite amount of variables to create something. Are you trying to tell me that <laughs> that machine theoretically couldn't create? I agree. Here's my rebuttal to that. Okay. In order for me to learn something, I need an environment to go off of. So I think that the exponential nature of our technology is, could actually slow in a sense. Cause we're like, I'm sitting here and I was on the same train you were as like, bro, we got like 10 years and it's gone. You know, it's gone. I think like and 500. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sure. 
I'm now on that thing too, where it's like, we need to create an environment. Yeah. So an AI needs to interact with another AI environment in mm. order to get to that super intelligence. Mm. I think that is what's going to take 500 years. Mm. I think the building the AI in itself and having those self learning, like, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it was like, okay, beat a human player in chess. Then it was beat a human player and go. And we're like, yeah. Oh my God, we're fucked. You know, yeah. like it's going to take a little bit longer than that, yeah. but it's, we have to have an AI environment and an AI machine or entity or, or whatever it is interacting with another AI environment, whatever yeah. the, I don't I have no idea what I'm talking about, yeah. but <laughs> we both have no idea. <laughs> no what clue. It, we're just like zero clue. <laughs> But it, it needs yeah. to interact and learn from that environment because yeah. as you just said, I would never be able to learn. So I'd play the piano for a while. I would yeah. never be able to play the piano without that environment of hearing a piano. Right. So I need to have a language that speaks with another language that interacts with that yeah. environment. And I think that once we hit that point, yeah. okay. <laughs> Back it, 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 it up, folks. Yeah, it's time to go. We've <laughs> had a good it. run. That's it. Yo, a very unpopular opinion. I don't think it would be bad. Uh, I mean, once if the world evolves beyond us, Yeah. I mean, the, we don't really care when we make a, animals go instinct or yeah. kill rainforests. And I don't think we're, you know, we're be, beyond our own egos. We're not special. Not in at the all. life forms. Not at all. <laughs> the not earth. at all. Like we're insignificant as fuck. Yeah. Um, you ever heard of the f- oh, Faramici? Fermini? Uh-huh. Oh, I fucked one of those things up. Uh-huh. Paradox. That person that we usually have here, we need here right now. The Fermini paradox is that whatever that name is, yeah. we need the theory of why aliens haven't contacted us or extraterrestrial life. Like, oh, fuck, we're getting into the weeds. Oh, let's go. Let's, let's go. Weird. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> the reason why um, we haven't been contacted yeah. or it's radio silence across the universe because yeah. there's shit like it's, you know, mathematically, it's almost statistically impossible that we're the only person yeah. or the only uh, higher intelligence yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the universe. The reason being that we will self-destruct in such a short period of time, it's not even worth it. It's not worth it for um, an AI intelligence or an alien <laughs> intelligence or whatever it is yeah. to come in and tap into our resources because it's yeah. be gone in a blink. Oh, yeah. So, and that goes back to climate change that we will self destruct too quickly to ma- even make a difference. And that's mm. why we haven't been contacted or worked in some sort of symbiotic relationship, attacked, contacted, worked with whatever yeah. that fucking relationship uh, will be is because we'll just burn up and die before it even matters. So it's like maybe we will get to the point of dying biologically. Our wetware will run out mm-hmm. um, before you know we mm-hmm. matter. Okay. Or maybe AI is just the next iteration. So as much yeah. as, we, as we started this conversation being like we're primal beings yeah. and we, our whole thing is just to pass knowledge on, well, maybe the purpose is to invent the next iteration of ourselves which yeah. is not biological exactly Maybe which is in it. which is in this form because i mean the this may be the last century that a pure human being is born which is crazy to think about i mean like think of like cell editing uh, genetic think, gene editing and shit. yeah like and the idea of a cyborg today seems so crazy. Foreign sci-fi. But yeah. in 20, 30, 40 years, that will look different. Well, yeah, yeah. And I don't think that's necessarily wrong. Like, I just think it is. The you same savage, way. savage, bro. It, you some it savage. is what it is, bro. <laughs> Thanos did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. It's way too hot. Here. Yeah. Um, but, but, I mean, just like, like we said, like... W- I think the the world is much bigger than we are. Yes. The universe is much bigger than we are. We affect it negatively and positively. There's other life forms on this planet, uh, plants, animals, whatever the case may be. And if it comes that we don't evolve in this form, I think beyond our own ego, there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing really special about us. No, we're hardware right that at the end of the day like you you're born and 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 you die so yeah i mean the the, the concept of this being the last generation of like organic humans dude but what does that mean for like okay so if i were to ask you like what's your purpose because then in a world where it's like that you're just kind of like a robot like Uh, that kind of has to change yes you know i mean like does that yeah exactly so what's the intruistic value of life yeah if you're edited yeah, I mean, there's there's a doctor that's on trial in China right now for editing babies against. So how right. do you know that shit? Yeah. Like, uh-huh. There's um, another one in Russia that's trying to do the oh, same I didn't thing. Even know that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So he edited against the parents' will. I think it was twins. He edited the genes of the twins um, to 
I forget exactly the details of it, but essentially without the permission of the parent. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's at the end of the day, why wouldn't you do that? Like if you could predict that you're going to have early onset Alzheimer's mm-hmm. schizophrenia yeah. and you say, okay, here's a hundred eggs. Here's a hundred of your embryos. Yeah. These 98 have a 50% chance of getting one of these diseases right. genetically. Yeah. But these two don't. Yeah. So we can fry these 98, yeah. these 96 and go with these or even these two. Yeah. Okay. So they have a less chance of this, but if you actually want them to have superior intelligence, we can actually tweak something mm. right here. Are you okay with that? Why are you not okay with that? I don't like as a parent, which I'm not, um, that you know of, <laughs> that I know of shout out to the women in the world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh. um why wouldn't I be okay with that? Mm, that's true. Yeah, I have an edited kid, but like he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, because it'll be almost irresponsible. Like the same way, like with the like the vaccine conversation, it would be the same. Where it's like, well, if you could eliminate any possibility of like disease or something, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, like you, you guys made a kid the natural way. That's kind of weird and irresponsible. Exactly. It's just like, why didn't you just like? A hundred percent. See, I was born in a house. Yeah. I was born in a house, not in a hospital. So I like, and I had that, like, I never got vaccinated. I, I went to Haiti uh, two years back and uh-huh. it was like three years back. And it was like, I had to get all my vaccinations. Oh. I had never had any of it. Really? Cause my mom was like, nope, natural baby. She was lighting sage in the air, ganja, all that type yeah, of stuff, yeah. you know, shout out mom. Yeah, shout <laughs> out the moms out there. Yeah. Um, and so, but she got the same pushback and like yeah. in school and all that I was like, well, why would you? Well, you just had a kid. You yeah. just had a kid. You just pushed him out. Now yeah. he's here. Yeah. And it's like, and she was like, "Yeah, of course." Yeah. You know, so what if we look at that the same way? Like, wait, 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 wait. like you didn't yeah. selectively breed your child, yeah. or you did it now? Like you, f- you fucked to have a kid. <laughs> you didn't just have it implanted. Yeah. It's like, oh, like you know, like, like, oh, you get weird you know he's one of those. He had yeah. a he had a natural kid, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. But all the kids don't play with them because yeah. like, oh, he, uh, he like, could have diseases yeah. and shit. He could have rabies and all that yeah. stuff. And he's not like, because also you have to think like everyone will be tall, like or everyone will be like, 100%. like physically 100%. the same. So it's like not fair. Yeah, it's really not. It is like straight up not fair. Yeah. So anyways, like people will be yeah. like seven feet, just like walking around seven, eight feet. That's what it is. That's what it is. So it's like Olympics. Like what happens then? <laughs> like what happens? So you have like natural Olympics and yeah. people are like jumping natural distances and then you have edited Olympics. <laughs> I don't know where that goes. Yeah. Um, anyways, I want to, let's double back again. Listen, you have this like this concept of what I'm seeing is like I don't want to be pigeonholed into one person. Yeah. If I can just keep on trying to bring this conversation back to life, <laughs> back to Earth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gene editing. Um, yeah. You have this idea of like I don't want to be one person. I want to be pigeonholed. I don't yeah. want to be designed. I don't want to live in a system. I don't want to have a predetermined set of values, work ethic, what like everything. I just don't want that to be set in stone. I yeah. want to be malleable. I want to be free. I want to have freedom yeah. of expression, freedom of creativity. Yeah. And I like, I fuck with that on a heavy level. Like that's a hundred percent where my life goes freedom of time. But in that, like, why is that important? Because if we go back, if we think about that conversation we just had of like, well, it's all happiness. Mm-hmm. Why can't you just be ignorantly happy and in a lane and in a box and in a direction and, and put towards this one thing? I'm an engineer and I build bridges, dude, and I'm happy as hell. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just go that route? Like what, what, what you clearly could go either way. Yeah. Well, I think the engineer dude could be happy and I could be happy. So there's no right or wrong. There's, there's no, there is no right or wrong. So why choose your route? I'm just mm-hmm. going to crown your route. Apparently, um, cool trademark. Yeah. yeah, the buck way. And the buck way. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the buck way. Uh, title of this podcast. Yeah. Um, anyways, and so why why go that way versus yeah. like the ignorant happy way? Uh, because I think, like I said, man, all I can do is is know myself. All I can do is explore self uh, and understand my my life, my experiences, what I'm into, and it's not my. And my only obligation is to live life the way I feel is best. It's not to try and fit into uh, these the other molds or the other, I guess, ways of happiness or other paths. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about life in in a specific way to me because I've thought about how I think about life. You know what I mean? Because I've thought about how I think about life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Because I, I feel like sometimes I have conversations and then people will be like, oh, I don't. I'm like, oh, what do you want to do? They're like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, wait, like, with, let's say, 18 years of life, however many years of life, literally 
it's free to be in your own head and think. You have all the time to think. So if you don't have enough time to think about who you are, what you want, where you want to be, you shouldn't have time for anything else. Mm. You shouldn't have time to sleep, yeah. eat, like that should literally be your, nothing. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. everything else is guided by that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and once you have a good understanding of who you are, where you want to go, what you want to do, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what you value, what you don't value, uh, what your principles are. Once you have that down pat, life is so smooth. It's amazing. Like life is it's so amazing. And and you can own your decisions. It's like win, lose, or draw. It was me. I'm nice. not gonna blame anything. I'm not gonna blame anyone. If someone does me wrong. I'm not resentful for them because I was an accomplice in letting them into my life, and therefore, I'm gonna own all my decisions. Totally. I'm gonna own uh, all of the choices I make. I'm gonna own the good times as much as I'm as I'm gonna own the bad times. Uh, the locus of control is gonna be inside where my life is determined more so by my actions or inactions and thoughts than it is by things that are external to me. Hell yeah. And, and obviously, the things that you can't control that will work in your favor for sure. Yeah. The things that you can't control that will work against you for sure. Mm-hmm. But I think, ultimately, once you have responsibility over your own life, and you say, this is what I've chosen. My reality is what I've created and what I've... <laughs> <laughs> Val's tripping. Yeah, Val's yeah. tripping. Shout out Val. Um, yeah, it's what it's what you've created. It's self. That's the definition of self ownership. That's the definition yeah. of self hired. Sorry, plug. Shout out, shout out, self hired. <laughs> that's what it's all about: taking responsibility, taking ownership, yeah. um, and and living that. So, okay, cool. So, I'm gonna get selfish here, yeah, because I got a couple questions. Go for it, bro. Let's I had a couple questions, man, yeah. and, we'll, and we'll wrap up here. I promise. But, bro, take. I'm I'm chilling. We chilling. We, we chilling, chilling, bro. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, whatever cool. you want. A producer was like, yeah, 90 <laughs> minutes, and I was like, yeah, no, that's not good. good, bro. We're doing three hours. This is gonna be your <laughs> longest podcast ever. It's gonna be part one and part two. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so. On that, yeah. me being selfish, yeah. I feel like we've had a couple similar thought trains, yeah. thought patterns and shit. Yeah. And, and we've gone down similar rabbit holes. I got to a point of like, what I know is true. You spoke a couple times about universal truths. Yeah. And like, and so that's a more articulate way of, you know, I always say like, yeah, what's true? Like what's true, true? Like what's really true? Like yeah. a universal truth? What's a timeless truth? This with you at this point in the game, like what is a timeless truth? Uh, the world doesn't care, mm. and it's not even a negative thing. Or like, oh, the world hates you. No, the the world cares. It doesn't care yeah. enough to hate you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the the world is. Yeah. Situations just are, um, and you kind of have to realize that the reality that you're gonna have, you're gonna have to create, mm-hmm. good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for me, that's one universal truth. Mm-hmm. Another one is be who you are uh, and don't be, don't be afraid to be who you are in fear of what other people will do or how they'll react. Mm. If you feel like, oh, like I'm, I'm too easygoing, people take advantage of me, you know, if that's really who you are and it's, it doesn't become like dangerous or like life-threatening, then don't don't change yourself as a as a reaction uh, to negativity. Mm. Change yourself for progression and nothing but progression. Mm. Don't if it's a if it's a fear mechanism, then ultimately it will have adverse results. I think to me, for me, that is a universal mm. that is a universal truth. Um, another universal truth is that you are neither the hero or the villain. Mm. Hmm. What? Like you're neither the <laughs> you're neither the hero or the villain, in the sense that we, like you spoke about telling stories, and we live our lives through stories. So every experience that we have, we narrate it as if it's a story. Like this happened to me, then this happened, and then right. that person did that. There's a protagonist. There's an antagonist. Exactly. Yeah. And more often than not, we're all is the protagonist. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, if if you have that objectivity of like, man, like okay, this is what I did wrong, this is what they did wrong, this is what I could have done better, this is what could have done better. You don't, you don't become resentful of situations or things or mm-hmm. you know, certain, certain things that you go through in life. And so for me, that's a universal truth that you're neither the hero nor the villain mm-hmm. uh, and that your side isn't the only side. And that because you don't understand someone's thoughts or feelings doesn't mean that they're invalid 
or because someone doesn't understand yours doesn't mean yours are invalid mm -hmm. uh and i think for me that's another universal truth hell yeah yeah couldn't agree more i love it yeah. no i love it i really do i really do man i think I think my biggest universal truth is just having a license to be wrong, man. Yeah. Just understanding, like that. understanding that knowledge is infinite. Yeah. You have grasped such a small part of it. Yeah. And um, that humility there. Okay. You know, what's, yeah. what's the biggest false universal truth that you hear? The biggest false universal truth? Yeah. Shit. I wasn't expecting this one. Um, I think the biggest false universal truth is that there are paths like there are no paths and if you are walking on one it's just because you've created it in your mind it didn't exist yeah like nothing exists like it's just it's literally wilderness go bushwhack dude so true that's it and that's there's no like and that's why that speaks back to like the you know experience versus advice and mentors and all this stuff like yeah that may be valuable but at the end of the day world is drastically different yeah. there are no paths there's no right there's no wrong it yeah. just is and i think that that is a huge misconception and then something you spoke on briefly of like there's no right or wrong yeah like that is context we bestow yes Upon like, oh, do I like this mic? Do I not like this mic? Do I like this table? Do I like this TV? Yeah, I like it for these reasons. Or I don't like it for these reasons. That's yeah. all false and imaginary. Oh, dude. This is literally just here. This is just an object in space and time. So true. You are just an object in space and time. Yeah. We're just existing. There's no, there's no good or bad. Like experiences aren't good or bad. Dude. So you always like, oh, is the cup half full? Is the cup yeah. half empty? Like, no, it's just a fucking cup drink with water in it. Drink if you're thirsty. Don't drink if you're not thirsty. Yeah, <laughs> <exactly>. <laughs> dude, I, I agree with you 100%. I think... Um, people look at life as being linear. So mm. they think of life and it's like, did I make the right decision? And so they're like, okay, life starts here. This is my destination. And then there's a path. And people that are more open will say, okay, cool. I made a wrong right here. But if I make another left, I can get to this point. Yeah. They think it's linear. They think it's straight and you're heading towards a direction that's predetermined. How I like to think about it, if I could envision it is, your life trajectory is like a circle, but it only maps where you take it. So instead of like a line going from here to here and having multiple ways to get that, it's every time you move, it opens up a whole new chain. Yeah. And when you move again, it opens up a whole new chain. Yeah. And these things aren't dependent on each other necessarily. Yeah. And you know, people, if something happens good or bad, they'll be like, oh, it's just, and that's what was meant to happen. It's like, no, you made a specific decision and a specific result happened. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? Yes. yes. It's kind of like. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But we like to believe that story. We like to believe that there's more order Oh, it's in meant the to world. be. It's, yeah. it's destiny. But I get that because if you think about it, it's like if you're born and all you know is like, man, what's the point? I'm just going to die. So we need things like purpose. We need things like happiness. Mm -hmm. Even if we don't know how to define them, mm -hmm. it gives our life a direction. It gives a North Star. Yeah, it gives a North Star, which is that linear, like, mm -hmm. this I am line. here, need to get there, exactly. go straight. But I'm just kind of like, well, I'm here. Well, now I'm here. Yeah. And then now I'm here. Yeah. And then now I'm there. Uh -huh. and like, and, and that's it. Did you ever play any, like, um, Civilization, Age of Empires as a kid or anything like uh, that? Bro. No, bro. No. Damn, I don't know if, yeah. Um, in that game, it's um, I don't know if it's still like this or not. In like the early two thousands, this game was like you, you build a civilization or yeah. whatever and trade resources, blah 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 blah. But there's a map. There's always a map. Yeah, you have to find your way around the map. And it starts where you just you know this little tiny spot where your like town center is, and then you literally have to go yeah. and find different things. And as you go, you start to see it unlocks. Oh shit, there's a river here. Uh. Oh shit, this here. And I, I view it in that way of like. There, there's like I can't understand the world at large. I can understand my direct surroundings, and I'm okay with that. So just like knowing and try to like con build context for myself around that. So it's like exploring that map, but that map's ultimately infinite. Yeah. So there is no path or way to go through it. It's just like you're exploring and you're seeing what's directly in front of you, and you're processing that based on your past experiences. Period. Yeah. That's it. And dude, like even the the smallest decisions have such a huge impact. In ways that we can't even fathom. Can't even, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, 100%. Like, you deciding to open that page as opposed to a different page. You deciding to wear what you're wearing today as opposed to something else. The way the mics are set up, 
it's going to change the time that we live here. It's going to change everything. what you eat. It changes everything. So for every tiny decision that we make, we open up a whole new door of infinite options. Okay, I agree. Yeah. What do you think, on a philosophical standpoint, Yeah. you're clearly not a determinist. But I bet you're not a full believer in free will. No. Nah, that's kind of dangerous. That's dangerous. Yeah. Where do you stand on those two things? So sorry, determinism is everything happens for a reason. Right. At the start, at the Big Bang, someone just like, it's, it's pool. Mm-hmm. And, and someone just hit the white ball and all the other balls f- flew in these random you know, ways. And because this mic is this way, that's a cause-effects relationship. It's a series of cause-effect relationships. Right. It's already predetermined. I may think I have free will, but I don't because this happened and this put me in this situation, which put me in this frame of mind to make the decision, et cetera, et cetera. It's all planned. Yeah. We're not planned, but it's all sequential. You're right. Free will is like, no, no, no. If I want to move this mic, I'm going to move this mic. Yeah. I want to have this conversation, I'm have this conversation. And I don't, I can't put you in um in a box, or I can't put you in a lane there. What's your thinking around that? Uh, I think I would lie somewhere in the middle range towards. That is what uncertainty sounds like, folks. <laughs> Man, you got me. You got me. You got me. You got me. Man, I don't know, cause I think that being a determinist is arrogant. Yes. In the sense that you cannot possibly fathom everything that can can happen and have an explanation for it. And also there's things that are beyond our, our rec- like there's things that we as human beings are physically limited in terms of understanding or viewing or seeing. Like we, we only see what our, li- what our eyes allow us to see. And by that I mean biologically, there's certain things that other species can see that we can't and certain things that we can that they can't there's certain wavelengths that we can hear that other species can't Mm -hmm. or wavelengths that they can hear that we can't Mm -hmm. so i think the idea of determinism you need to really have a good understanding of everything Mm -hmm. almost a perfect understanding of everything because then you can explain it Mm -hmm. it's like okay boom this then this then this then this then this free will on the other uh and i think in terms of in, t- in terms of philosophy, it it makes sense to me, but it's also very impractical. Okay. Because my free will may impede on your free will. Mm. And therefore, if you're reacting to my free will, that's no longer free will. Mm-hmm. You're now mm-hmm. reacting based on my actions, or you're now acting based on my actions. So it's kind of like, where do you draw the line? And I think it's a slippery slope. It is a slippery slope. All the greatest questions in life are paradoxes. Yeah. Which is the beauty of life, because then you can spend your whole life synthesizing it, trying to find your own way, thinking yeah. about it, yeah. or you can ignore it. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, you can just, uh, I don't know. I hear you. I hear you. So, so today, yeah. Like, what is, what do your days look like? What do you do? So you, you slyly, I mentioned the top twenty-five or twenty-five. You're like, I was that, and I was like, well, okay, cool, moving on, <laughs> like what got you to the point? Like I'm trying to, I always paint this. I always try to come full circle here Yeah. and people can listen to this whole podcast, but I don't know who this guy is. Yeah. <laughs> and that happens That's all so the time, you yeah. know, cause it's like you go deep in, into these concepts and, and thoughts and that's amazing. That's what this is about. And right. that's what we want it to yeah. be. It's amazing. But I do want to bring some context to it of like, okay, what made you, it, what got you to this position to yeah. the point where like I have people texting me like, Hey, yo, there's this dude. Hey, yo, there's this dude. Hey, yo, like w- why are those people texting me these things? What tangibly on the surface level, not all this methodical fucking, <laughs> you know, mumbo jumbo, yeah. you know, like what puts you in this position? What are you doing tangibly past this, these higher level concepts that we've been talking about? Right. How do you digest all of that and then live life? And yeah. how are you living your life today that puts you here? Oh man, um, I think it's a. Uh... Do you have a LinkedIn profile? Yeah. What the does that say? <laughs> what do you mean? What the hell does your LinkedIn profile say? Like the title? Yeah. Oh, I I think the title is uh, business development director at the Perk slash top twenty five hundred twenty five. I only have one more year of the 2525. So I'm, I'm clicking on to it. Because <laughs> then after that, I just kind of like, bro, let it go. Like, <laughs> okay, like, cool. let it go, fam. Yeah. Just let it go. You're cool. Just yeah. be cool. Just, just be cool. Just, be cool. just like, let's take, let's take that off. Let's yeah. take that off. Okay. Yeah. But like, 
That's Link. not Shout what out LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> Shout out. But I also feel like I'm a very different person on LinkedIn. There's 100%. like LinkedIn me, then there's like Instagram me, yeah. and then there's like like philosophy me, yeah. like yeah. The, and then there's also just like goofy, like I yeah, just yeah, like yeah. just look at memes most of the day, just <laughs> <laughs> talk about like the dumbest things. So yeah, it just depends, man. I like it. I like it. And a lot yeah. of the uh, the smartest people are like that. You have to train your body like um like an athlete you have to train your mind like an athlete yeah, right yeah. we always think like oh go 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 go, go. Uh, all day four to four or whatever the hell it is like now you need to take breaks yeah. have fun be creative let loose let your mind go the same way your body needs to let go yeah. um cool so i'm trying to i asked the linkedin thing because it's like no, no no like okay so you have the perk the, the perk the get perk. perked not the perk the perk yeah. um See, how it's so much so funny how much I don't know about this. I usually go so deep into all my fucking guests. This guy just throws me one. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. I'm not happy. I'm just grateful like, for it. Guy. I'm yeah. grateful for it. Oh, he's good. He's good. He's good. Sit him down. Sit him down. Talk with him. <laughs> I don't regret it. It was a good call. Anyway, so there's that. There's yeah. what you're doing with Manila Gray. Shout there's out Manila Gray. There's, oh, 100%. Shout, Shout out to Zell, who was yeah. just here and who's been on the podcast before, who was our first, like, great podcast. My first favorite podcast. Yeah, that's good, um, bro. Yeah, Zell's unreal. Anyways, and so... You have that, yeah. Like, what else are you working on? What's your role in those organizations or in those spots? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so, well, the first one, the perk, um, like straight out of school. That's kind of what I what I got into. I uh, met the founder, Dallas. Super funny, weird, long story. Love it. But for another time, because that's like a good 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> um, super dope guy. And basically, he he had been working uh, in sales. He was doing really well in sales, super sharp guy. And then he had an idea for a company, and then he started it, and then um, we met. And I, I think I was, like, employee number one, as in, like, full-time, like, wow. there. Um, and for me, it was, like, it was an opportunity, and it still is an opportunity to, to build a technology business. Mm-hmm. You know, software, something... I, I'm super geeky about it. I read all the weird like tech blogs, see mm-hmm, like, oh, mm-hmm. what's happening here? What's going on here? And so with that, basically, my role covers a lot of different things uh, from marketing to business development to operations and, mm-hmm. you know, everything in between. Because mm-hmm. when you're a startup, depending on the type of person you are, if you like ambiguity, you'll love it. Because mm-hmm. every day is different. Or you fucking hate yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah. if you like super structured... Yeah. You, it's not for you. It's not for you. Yeah. Because it's so uncertain, right? Like anything can happen. Like yeah. every day is different. Totally, and you can wear a million different hats. So yeah. what is the perk? Like plug a little bit. Yeah. Here. What is it? So basically, we're an employee engagement platform where we essentially help companies reward their employees in a more personalized and automated way. Mm. So typical use cases, companies will give someone... Uh, let's say a gift card and say hey thank you or like oh yoga for everyone but everyone is so different and individually we're rewarded by different things Mm -hmm. so basically what we do is we aggregate a cool marketplace of vendors uh, anyone from like spotify netflix helicopter rides to like translink to like starbucks coffee right and so every employee will get a branded card so you guys would have the self-hired card Mm mm-hmm uh, I have a card on me. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. I like it. It's, it's live, so I'm going to have to, like, put the scammers up. out there. Oh, okay, 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 I got you. Yeah. Hold yeah, 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 we got you. We'll blur that one out. We'll blur that out there. I know y'all are watching. I got you. So this is kind of cool. Yeah. So it's it's a Visa? Yeah, it's a card product. Okay. And basically, it's paired with a software that gives you a dashboard, shows you all your analytics, what your people are spending, uh, like, the type of categories that they like, uh, how much you've given out in rewards, who's getting rewarded the most yeah. and that sort of cool. thing. So it basically automates the process of having to guess what people like. It's it's easier at smaller companies, like for example, self hired you like you all know each other. But once you get to like five hundred or like even a hundred plus, getting something that's personalized for everyone mm-hmm. It's difficult and companies are spending billions of dollars that are wasted because like you give me a gift card to this place i really hate and then i'm like oh i'll never use this no, you already spent the 100 bucks right do you guys work in like benefits at all or anything like that so bordering on it so right now we're in perks which is more rewards right. uh, but in the future we'll be integrating benefits into the platform as because well. there's billions of dollars wasted every oh, year yeah it's ridiculous yeah. yeah just like go on use and that, like we remove process like the reimbursement like oh you have to show your receipt then you have mm-hmm. to do this and this this is fully automatic you get your card it has the logo your branding whatever mm-hmm. they spend it it's all online uploaded you see everything on the dashboard like freaking cool similar. man hell yeah that's amazing and it sounds like it's uh you can 
wear a bunch of different hats in that. Oh yeah. Um, if you're employee number one, yeah. Are you on employee number two yet, or like, oh, like where are you guys like at? Number seven. Next number seven. Week. So yeah. oh, solid. Next week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Congratulations to that guy or girl. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's always fun when you're in on the ground level. Yeah. I love that. I live for that. Like be on the last dollar and split the bill with you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Just like, yeah. all right, here we go. Yeah. You know, like Let's might make it work. Might work. <laughs> might not. But like, I'm here anyways. I'm yeah. here anyways. So cool. Uh, that's the perk. Um, how do companies or organizations like hit you up? The meaning like say, just cause I'm looking at clothes right now. Yeah. So far it's like, Oh, I want to give, uh, I want to have this available to an employee base. I mean yeah. like, Oh, I have, I work for a, uh, I work for a restaurant and yeah. that restaurant gives me certain perks that owner knows that I'm into streetwear mm-hmm. that's locally made. So I'm going to give them a self hire. Like how do you connect the dots between these two businesses? Yeah. Like meaning the, the business that needs to give their employer wants to give their employee rewards versus like these little spots. Like you mentioned some big ones. You also mentioned some small ones. Like yeah. what's that process like? So that process is, it's very simple. Like you'd say, you can send me an, an email. Just like, oh, it's like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. You can send me an email, go on the site, and yeah. you can send us an email to the site, yeah. www.getperk.co.co. Um, it's yeah. kind of like the, yeah, yeah. the new thing. I got it. It was like okay. .io yeah. for a while. Dot still .io a is still thing? a thing, yeah. We actually might switch to .io in like Ooh. three months. So. Trendy. What, what, okay, what is that? Okay, let's just debunk that. Like, what okay. is that? What is .io versus .io? Because I know that it's like, if you're in Denmark, it's yeah. .dk, yeah. but what's .io? Uh, Indian Ocean. Oh yeah, the more you know, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, Indian What's, Ocean. What? Okay. It actually really what? serves no purpose. Yeah, like if you <laughs> if you really think about it. Okay, what's dot co? Uh, dot co. I'm actually not sure what dot co is, but I know io is Indian Ocean because I found that so weird. That's <laughs> like I, super I weird. I'm not gonna forget that <laughs> yeah. one. I'm not gonna forget. So like that I one forgot sure. a bunch of them, but io is like Indian Ocean. Super weird. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm yeah. sure there's a reason for that. Yeah, there has to be a reason Probably. for that. Probably. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, so there's that. What are you doing with Manila Gray, the artist management side? Yeah. Everything you're doing on, like, there's a whole other side to your life. Yeah. That we just kind of <laughs> skipped. Yeah, we literally did not. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, yeah, we'll talk about this. We'll talk yeah. about that. And then whatever, whatever. But it's funny, what, what's that about? People usually want to talk about those things. And then today we kind of like uh, went like the reverse. It was just like, yo. I'm kind of here sitting like we should inform people. Yeah. I want to know a little bit. But yeah. I really wanted to just get to the shits. Yeah, but. yeah. Shout out Manila Gray, man. Hardest out. Doing great. Doing really great. Doing great. Super talented. Great um, team. Amazing team, man. They're so talented, so smart, so hardworking. You guys are loaded. Like you guys are, your team, like I know well, not all the members of your team. I know yeah. a lot of guys on your team. Yeah. And that's like, that's like the Warriors. <laughs> It's like the Warriors. <laughs> it's like the Warriors. <laughs> I'm like, you got Stephanie Clay great. right there, and you have a hell of a good supporting cast. So. Oh, yeah, man. Um, so, anyway, yeah. so what do you do? What do you do? What do you do with them? What is that so, like? So with Vanilla Gray, early on, um, me and Azel were managing them, uh, and basically, what do you do? You do everything, and you kind of have to figure it out, and you don't know what you're doing, yeah. but you know where you're trying to go, and you're trying to build it. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have all the answers, but you're looking for the answers and you're learning and you make mistakes and then you get better yeah. uh, and help make decisions and then today is more so my role is kind of like uh on on the label side overseeing our our, our strategy on how do we grow how do we scale mm-hmm. uh, how do we get to that next that next point because we're still hungry man like the, the boys have done well lots of growth in the last two years but it's nowhere close to where we're going to take it. Mm-hmm. And so right now we're working through that process of like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. This is, this is dope, but this is far from where we're, where we need to like, where we're going to go. Hell yeah. And so trying to dial that down and, and figure that all out. Do it right. Cause there's right. a lot of ways to do it wrong. <laughs> yeah. And they're lot. doing it wrong. Some people are doing it wrong, but that's, that's not, no, that's the nature of the game. It's nature of the game in, yeah. in any game. It's like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like, and also I wouldn't even say they're doing it wrong. They're just doing it in ways that we would never do it. Because <laughs> we deem that as wrong, but yeah, okay, yeah, I got you. No, because I got we deem trying to say. this as more correct. Okay, <laughs> right, right, right. No, I'm kidding, right, right. but it's just kind of like one of those things where it's like, hey, man, you do you. Yeah. We're gonna do what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. Cool. No, I love it. I love it. I mean, so I asked Azel this when he was on. Yeah, so that's Zelly. Twenty nine so, episodes ago. Wow. Geez, wow, the North. Crazy. Um. Yeah, I I asked him this on on episode eleven, which was in this, this November, yeah. October. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I asked him like, okay, so Manila Gray's done 
had a ton of growth. You know, like I was like, well, what were you looking for? And he's like, we just wanted a million plays on YouTube. Yeah. Which is like, okay, so you guys are way past that now. Um, what are you guys looking for? What do you guys want to achieve here? What is like, okay, this is the next yeah. milestone. What is that? Manila Gray is going to be the reference to anyone here and beyond of a story of like two super talented people that followed their dreams uh, in a place where there isn't an infrastructure for that. And it's the reference that can give a kid confidence to say, I can pursue music. Or I can pursue something creative because these guys did it out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, they just had their team and themselves and a belief in what they were doing mm -hmm. and they created something and oh, they yeah. kept it moving. Uh, and so that's, that's the goal. You know, create a culture out here, show people. There's so much talent in Vancouver, man. So it's much, crazy. so much talent in Vancouver. So much potential, and beyond. And it's crazy, like the the fan base that they have now is like worldwide, and no. it's. So yeah, the next step is just being that reference point and being undeniable. Like, you know, it, when when you're doing something, people are like, oh, okay, they got like your, oh, whatever the case may be. But the guys are so good creatively. They yeah, make great crazy. music and they're very passionate about it. Yeah. And now it's kind of like, okay, how do we become undeniable? Yeah. Yeah. I think you already are. Mm. Maybe not from a market standpoint. To people that are paying attention, you are. Yeah. Mm. Um, that being said, I always think that um, Vancouver eats its babies. Mm. Um. I have no like real basis for that. I just think that we don't crown our kings when they're princes. Yeah. I think that we always wait until they go away. The Seth Rogans of the world. Like, oh wow, look what he did in LA mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is. Has um, Vancouver championed you in in a way at all? Have they owned you? I'm not from here, so mm -hmm. to speak, although I do live here. Mm -hmm. How, what has been your relationship, and be honest in this, with Vancouver? Because I know you guys are huge internationally. Mm -hmm. Like, What has been your relationship with the hometown, and have they kind of put... Have they put Manila Gray on their back yet? Yeah. Or, or what's that? What's that? What's going on there? I mean, the the city has shown us some, like an immense amount of love. Um, everyone from, you know, like the promoters, the events. I mean, shout out everyone like Blueprint, Safe and Sound, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like Breakout, uh, and and the team over there. Mm -hmm. Every, the the city has really embraced us. The fans have really embraced the uh, Manila Gray, the sound. Vancouver is one of our top cities often on, on most songs when whenever the the guys do have shows people come out people come show love people will come people come support so hell yeah good to hear yeah man like everyone like timber everyone's really shown shown Manila gray love mm -hmm. uh, and even just like when the guys are out all they see like people come up take pictures what's hell up yeah. what's up hell yeah the guys are super chill like really really nice guys mm -hmm. and so yeah I would say the city the city has embraced us. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. That's great to hear. Yeah, but I think it also depends on, on how you say it because I think it's two-sided. I, I get where you're coming from with that. But as an outsider coming into Vancouver, I think my perspective was always different. Um, where b even before Manila Gray, in, um, I always kind of felt it was two-sided that sometimes the city doesn't embrace the potential that's there. But also on the creative side, people feel an entitlement on the sense that well, I'm from here, so support me automatically, which which I don't necessarily agree with. I don't think anyone's entitled to anything, really. You said that earlier, but we weren't even talking about this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I mean that's another <laughs> universal truth. I universal truth. No one owes you shit, bro. The only thing that's owed to you is death. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. besides that, that's it. Nothing else is promised, right? So it's kind of like do the best you can do. Put out great energy. Uh, and if you do it, you don't have to, you don't have to tell us like, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it like, out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, you if, you're, if you're good enough, they'll come. You're good enough. They'll come. Yeah. If build, you have to keep school. on telling us that you're good yeah. and like, oh, no, then it's kind of like, well, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting. We, um, we have a constant battle on here on the podcast about, right people like reaching out and, and supporting and like shout out to all you guys because you're amazing and shit like that but it's like people there's a lot of people that want to like come on and have a conversation which is like yeah. awesome and that's what we wanted we wanted like that was our first goal was like yeah. let's have this be a place where people want to come yeah hell yeah now it's like 
if you have to keep asking or keep telling us how good you are, yeah. <laughs> or do you guys get that a lot? There's like, something wrong. Man, I'm so awesome. There's something wrong there. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you shouldn't have to tell us. And I think that that is a universal truth across businesses. Yes. Across everything. Like yeah. if you're good enough, it w- if you build it, they'll come. If yeah. it's good, if it's true, they'll come. Yeah. Um, and let's be clear here. There's a difference between being confident and believing in yourself as opposed to needing that reassurance. 100%. And there's and a fine you, line there. You know what I mean? Like, fine fucking line there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, do the work. Like, put in, put in the groundwork. Become work. great. Become good. Become whatever it is. Yeah. And, and it will come. Like, it will come. It may seem like a ton of resistance at the start, yeah. but it will come. Um, so, on Manila Gray, yeah. on this last, on because you're doing an album. Well, have you? No. We, when's the album coming out? Soon. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's okay. like final. This next one, man. Uh yeah. This next one. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so where's this next one gonna take you guys? Uh. Can you give me like the summer, oh, July, man. August, September? Let, let's just say we we have some for the summer planned. We have something for the fall planned. <laughs> These next few months. Yeah. Got it. So we're, so it's it's lift off time again. Yeah. You guys have been working. Yeah, I'm working on some um, other stuff in, in the space again. Uh, you know, in yeah. the future, we'll, we'll come back and have another conversation. We will be having a much different conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when in, things in come into or, or two years yeah. or whatever that may be. So. Much different, yeah. Cool. Last question. I'm being selfish again here. Let's go for it, bro. Because um, I can't have you leave this table without asking you this. Let's because it. it's something I struggle with. Yeah. When you're in a person in your situation. Yeah. Perceived in this world as you're perceived. Yeah doing the things that you're doing and operating in the spaces that you are, mm-hmm. you kind of create an archetype for yourself. You create a, a lane. You yeah. created your own lane. Cool. Whatever that means, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But you're dealing in spaces, in economies, in industries yeah. that are beyond your years. Yeah. Meaning you're having conversations with people who are much older and potentially wiser and potentially yes, smarter than you are. For sure. A lot smarter. Yeah. How do you handle that? How do yeah. you approach those situations? Because you might not just be having some form of conversation with them. You might be dealing with them as a client. You might be dealing with them as a potential business partner yeah. or, or, or getting a distribution deal or whatever that may look like. How are you walking into these situations? with knowing what you know because don't get me wrong you're intelligent for your age everyone knows it but it's like knowing what you know now having the humility humility that you know know now going down the roads you've gone down and everything that you've accumulated to this point how do you have a relationship or how do you interact within that relationship with these people that are much older stronger wiser whatever it may be Mm -hmm. in position to power how do you go about that how do you walk into those meetings yeah i think for me it's a it's a balance of you know always being aware like man there's still a lot i need to learn there's still a lot i need to experience these people know what they're doing but also walking in there knowing the value that you bring and so it's it's a balance of like man i'm gonna learn i'm not gonna you know i'm gonna be respectful i'm gonna learn uh, i'm gonna add value and know that look you have some ideas that are valid you have some ideas that could be useful because i think i think in life about adding about life is about adding value in the context of business mm-hmm. it's all about value yeah. everything is correlated to how much value you bring what can right? you bring to the table yeah what can you bring to the table and that always looks very different right that could be a certain experience that you had it could be a certain insight that you have and i found that with younger people we kind of have this we we rule ourselves out before we even try to take the shot but it's kind of like man you don't know that your insight uh, that you saw maybe being on Instagram or whatever, that could be very beneficial for a business. That could be very beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually, there was a, have you seen those like trending LinkedIn things on the side? Sometimes I was just like, look at it like, oh, okay, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, 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 but I was yeah. reading one yesterday about like uh, shadow boards where executives will bring on younger people that work for them mm-hmm. uh, and kind of create a separate board of young people that they will present their ideas to and they go back and forth. Wow. Yeah. Uh, one company that did that was Gucci and I think their revenue went up uh, 136%. And they were comparing it to, I don't want to say the wrong name, but I think it might have, I want to say Prada. No. That it might have been someone else. Don't call me on that. It might be a Louis Vuitton or something like that. Yeah, or something or, like that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Louis, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they had really, 
over the last few years they've been in serious decline yeah. and uh, the CEO said that they made a mistake in not really tapping into digital early enough and tapping into mobile early enough mm. but if they've spoken to any young people that are constantly on their phones I would have told them this is the only way to go yeah. they would have told them yo uh, I guess now it's it's a weird space but like use influencers yeah. but thing man eight years ago that was still a relatively new space that was pretty powerful like five yeah. years ago right yeah. so I think walking in the room being humble and understanding like hey i have a lot to learn and there's a lot that i don't know yeah. but you also walk in that room with a sense of i know i can bring value i know i can bring insights hell yeah you know uh and it's that thing of like i'm i can i can provide a value here and then you have that confidence of like hey like and ultimately if you're if it's a client uh, if it's a business partner whatever the case may be ultimately it's not about whose idea it is it's more about which idea is best yeah and what's best for the bigger picture yeah and often i've been very fortunate enough like most of the people i work with uh, if actually all of the people i work with be it in fashion be it in technology be it in music they're the type of people that are open and and like i would say pretty pragmatic if like okay if it makes sense if you can explain the logic to me yeah. then yeah, yeah that's the better idea as opposed to like no i like this idea because it's my idea mm-hmm. and that's the bottom line you have to have an idea meritocracy where the best ideas win. Yeah. Best ideas have to win. That's it. Yeah. Cool, man. Listen, we could go. Man, and there's go. so much we didn't even touch There's on. so Holy much we didn't even go to. Yeah. We'll, uh, yeah. This is a conversation we'll have to continue one time. Yeah. But the two, three hours two this times. is. Yeah. Uh, is is gold, and this is just a conversation that continued to get elevated and elevated and elevated and elevated. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy about it, man. I appreciate you coming on and sure. and, and everything. So. What do you want? Where do you want people to go if they're curious about you, about what you're doing? Where Bro. do you want to direct people? The library. Go, go read a book. <laughs> go, <laughs> go watch a weird documentary. Yeah. Go watch something you wouldn't ordinarily watch. Go have a conversation with someone you wouldn't ordinarily speak to. Hell yeah. Um, talk to people that don't think the way you do. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where I would direct them, man. Hell like, yeah. Yeah. Dope. Wait, man. I appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Until next time. Until next time. Episode 40. Let's go. Damn. Appreciate you, (laughs) bud. Of course. That's a wrap.